to his regression of success. Well, I, th- or I think he's going to have he, but, a future of success, but, which is the conversation we've had about what a GM's job. But is, Steve, right? I, I don't think I, I, I don't think his baseball card is a bad baseball card. I said it. I said it last week. The guy's going to end up in the Hall of Fame. He's got a great baseball card. Now, the last couple of years, some of the deals he's made have been dreadful. The Donaldson deal, the the, the Sanchez picking up um, the, picking up Donaldson's contract was awful. IKF was not a good deal. Uh, it's the same one. Um, yeah, there, there've been there've been a couple of questionable ones, and people that he he did get were injured. I, I understand that, but he's made some good deals too. He's a good GM, and they they do win. And I know that the mission statement for the organization is, you know, World Series of Bust. And, yeah, I, I've been saying for the last couple of years, you better change that mission statement. It's an impossibility now. Only one team out of 30 had a successful year. I just, I, I don't know how other management teams look at him, but I'm just wondering, do fans or do media people around the country look at Brian's success and say it's about the money, it's about the market? But I will tell you one thing, though, that's probably more important and probably more telling. GMs around the country think he's unbelievable. They have the utmost respect for him. Well, but as far as the perception around the baseball world, outside of the executives, are do and I'm not saying it's the right perception, but, oh, well, he's got all the money. And if they go out and spend it to get out of this 82 and 80 season, go out and spend a ton of money, again, will that just further the narrative? Well, well, Brian's great when he's got an open checkbook, when he's got a high payroll, but can he help my small market team win when I can't write checks for him? Don, why don't we take a, a little bit of a breather here, and while sure. we're doing that, tell us about BetMGM. Well, that is... Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered parts of appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Sign up today at AHS.com. See everything your store can do with tools from Square. Your inventory automatically restocks, so you never run low. Your online store stays open 24-7, so you're always ready to sell. Your payments are processed in seconds, so customers can breeze through checkout. And with one account to manage it all, you've got more time for taking time out. Get your all-in-one retail system by signing up at Square.com today. Pros knows that your hair is unique to you. I've got curly hair. That's also fine. Working out makes my hair lose definition. Oily roots, but with dry ends. Heat damage is always on my mind. Pros looks at over 85 different factors about your hair, lifestyle, and goals when designing your custom made-to-order formula. Using natural and effective ingredients for your best hair yet. Hair care that's made just for me. Take our free consultation today at pros.com slash TV. I was tired of being told by my doctor that my weight was always the root of my problems. Found changed that. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found, and I'm just getting started. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. Their team of behavioral experts helped me to make lasting changes. Finally, I found a program that fits my lifestyle, improved my health, helped me reclaim my confidence. Try it out. Head to joinfound.com to start. If you have health problems, you may think life insurance is hard to get. Colonial Pen has an easy solution. Guaranteed acceptance. Whole life insurance. It's easy because you don't need a medical exam and there are no health questions. Visit colonialpen.com for more information and a free gift.
Does it still count as ending the night with McDonald's? If you order it for breakfast the morning after? I'm ordering either way. Order McDelivery in the app. Falling through the sky Can hardly believe my own Disasters don't take a break for the holidays. With your help, neither does the Red Cross. Lundquist is now in the Hall of Fame. Did it yesterday. Yeah. Got it done. Deserves it. What a great run in New York. Uh, I guess it was 15 years with the Rangers. Kept them in it every single year. Went to the Stanley Cup. Never won it. But what a glittering resume. And from all uh, accounts, one of the best people that you're ever going to meet. So congratulations to Henrik Lundquist. It, it is crazy. You know, we talk about, like, how old we're getting. And, you know, Henrik Lundquist and I both became Rangers at the same time, believe it or not. He made his debut the year that I signed on with MSG to do pre and post coming out of the lockout. So I saw his entire career. So it's crazy. You went through with the Yankees, too, Michael with Jeter, and to see somebody blossom into a low-round pick, not expected to do anything. He even said in his speech, like, he was worried that he was going to be in Sweden. Nobody was going to notice how great he was. And uh, here he is having a Hall of Fame career. I know he didn't win the ring, but he got them darn close, and he put them on the map. Seven straight years not making the playoffs. Then the lockout's eight. They come out of the lockout, predicted to be the worst team in the NHL, and they make the playoffs that season and pretty much every year but one during the prime of his career and went to a Stanley Cup final, won a President's Trophy, um, Vesna trophies. He won a gold medal with Team Sweden. Probably one of the greatest goaltenders not to win a Stanley Cup. And um, I'm glad he got appreciated in the Hall of Fame and his number 30s in the rafters. And even though there's no ring, fans will look back at those 15 years, Michael, is pretty special. They're relevant every single year, and most of those years, it was because of him. Well, congratulations to the King. And I didn't even know this till I read the story today. Three games into his career, Don, the Hall of Famer himself, Larry Brooks of the New York Post, called him King, the way he carried himself. Yeah, and of course, with the, um, with the crowns that are on Sweden's jersey, and that rookie year, he won the gold medal. And just he played way more games than anybody had ever thought of um, that he was going to be able to play. And he was going through a tremendous amount of stress. They got swept by the Devils. But, you know, in the next year they go back, they win, they sweep the Thrashers, they go on to the second round of the playoffs and, and start competing for cups. So uh, I know some people think, how do you call yourself the king when you weren't the king? And he didn't call himself that. Everybody called him around it. But it, it had to do with the, the Sweden flag and the jersey and, and the crown. And he, and he certainly uh, carried himself exceptionally well well-dressed great-looking guy perfect new yorker for a guy that's not from new york and he's made his home here and he's still a part of the team on television right now and he's still they're going to be they're going to be lundquist jerseys for the next 30 years going to madison square garden that's how important he was 1-800-919-3776 mets had a press conference today introduced carlos mendoza as their new manager, and uh, he was asked uh, at the press conference, what, what is a team managed by him? Uh, what will it look like? Yeah, it starts with connection, relationships, so the players can trust me and know, you know, that I'm there for them and want to have their back, right? But it comes down to preparation, attention to details each and every day, and competing. Uh, I want the team to go out there and play hard every pitch, and then at the end of the day, I want them to have fun. But I'm a huge and a big believer. I've learned through my experience that the connections, the trust, the respect, the relationships in the locker room, in the clubhouse, when you care about people, when you connect, it creates that culture that we're talking about that eventually will show up on the baseball field, but guys are going to be prepared and just know that we understand the, the, the expectations here in New York. Now, there was a bogus quote that was out there yesterday, and people ran with it, which, uh, I mean, I guess you have to know Carlos Mendoza to know that that quote just couldn't have come out of his mouth. You know, he's wearing number 28, and they said that, you know, his, his quote, the quote that was falsely put out there, I'm putting 20 out there because we're going to win our first championship before the Yankees win. We're going to win another championship before the Yankees win their 28th. That's not Carlos Mendoza. This guy is pure class. And he gave the reason why he wears 28. That was his number in the minor leagues when he won an MVP. And he met his wife on September 28th. 
So don't believe okay. everything you read on social media. A lot of it's not true. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to be careful for sure. Now with no verification, you know, nobody knows what's true anymore. I don't know how to feel about this, honestly. Hmm. I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm a Met fan. I don't know how to feel about this hire. I have no idea. I don't know if he can do the job. I don't know if he's going to be allowed to do the job. I mean, baseball's kind of ruined the hiring of a manager for fans. They just have. Now, if you had hired a Bruce Bochy or if you had hired somebody like when they hired um, – their, their, their last hire, obviously, was, was somebody that you felt like, all right, this is somebody who's going to have his hands on this thing. I know who this person is. I've seen him work before. So, uh, of course, I'm going to feel good about it. But I don't know how to feel about this, Michael. I'm sure he's a, I'm, I'm sure he's a really good guy, and I'm sure he, he knows a lot of baseball. But in the analytic world, how much control is he going to have? And is there any kind of a resume to sink my teeth into to know what kind of job he's going to do? Well, you, you, you're, I don't think it's unfair to think that way. All I can tell you is what I know of the guy. He's a good man. Uh, he's personable. The players respected him. He would get into their grill if they went off the, you know, the, the rails about things that the, the Yankees wanted to done in a certain way. He would, he would enforce. So I think he's got a great baseball mind. He has certainly worked his way up here. And we'll see. But you, you don't know how a person, you know, being in that big seat is completely different than being in the, being in the second seat. Because the second seat, no. you're making suggestions. You're carrying out the orders of your lieutenant. In the first seat, the buck stops there. Ironically, buck stopped before he got his job. Now, he was asked about the state of the Mets. I'm excited about our roster. Like I said earlier, you know, this is a team that won 100 games not too long ago, and a lot of the core players are still on our roster, right? So I do feel really good about that. But yeah, we got some work to do, and I'm, I trust David and his team to continue to make improvement and to continue to add. But I, I am very excited with the group of players that we currently have on our roster. So there you have it. Now, I happen to like him personally. I think he's a good man. But if you're just sitting down and you're evaluating what the Mets have done this offseason... They got rid of a potential, probably not going to make it because he doesn't have a, a world championship yet, potential Hall of Fame manager for a complete neophyte. Now, the neophyte right. might end up being a Hall of Fame manager. We don't know. But they got rid of a sure thing for a bit of a gamble. And Remember, this is where they were going before, Buck, too, though. What do you mean? They were going neophyte. Right. A few years ago. Oh, they, they went the fight a couple of times, and it, it, right. they blew up in their face. Oh, yeah, twice in a row they were going to do it. Callaway, terrible. Yeah. Luis Rojas never really got a chance. He's going to end up being a good manager one day. Mm. But, um, yeah, it, it, and then they, they were going with Carlos Beltran before right. Rojas. So, uh, we, we, we've we asked the Mets for Stearns. Oh, they love us, yeah. And we've asked the Mets for Mendoza. We haven't even, they haven't even answered us. But... If and when we ever get David Stearns on, I'm going to ask him one question. The one question I want to definitely ask him, how did you get rid of Buck Showalter without ever talking to him? How is that possible? Did you have, know some terrible thing about him? How could you not even speak to the guy who still owed $3.5 million by your mm -hmm. owner? Why wouldn't you have at least talked to him to see if there was a connection? Why didn't you do that? And, and why did you have Billy Epler fire him? So I think that they did that, this is my guess, thinking they were definitely getting Craig Council. They were completely snookered by him. He got announced yesterday as the Cub manager. And then they, you know, they pivoted. And they got a really bright young guy who a lot of teams really respected. He was going to get a manager's job at some point. But his first role is on Broadway. It's a tough way to start. Aaron Boone started yeah. that way. He's done, done well, won a lot of games, hasn't won a championship yet. Mendoza's first job is going to be but, with the New York Mets. It, but it isn't even the lack of resume. I just don't feel like the managers are allowed to to have uh, the personality on a team anymore. You know, uh, like like when I knew when Buck was the manager, I knew Buck. I saw what he did before, so he had the resume, but I also knew that he was going to have his fingerprints on this team. That literally and figuratively, the Buck was going to stop with him. But but I, but when you hire these neophyte managers, Michael, it just reeks of, well, we're not asking you to do much anyway. You know, the analytics are going to kind of handle things. It's about relationship with players. But as a fan, how am I supposed to know if that works or not? I guess ultimately wins and losses. But we live in a world now from a talk show host where I can't criticize him for, for not bunting the runner over because that's not, that's not his decision or pinch running for this guy or how he handles the bullpen. You don't have that ability anymore 
to put your fingerprints on this team. And there's no style. There used to be styles of managers. This guy likes to go with his pitchers longer. This one likes to go deep into the bullpen. This guy is a speed guy. This is a guy that likes to hold out for the three-run home run. That's all gone now. Those managers are going to go away. And I know Bruce Bochy won a championship, great, but it's not going to be enough to, to change how these b baseball teams are going to handle things moving forward. So I wish him the best of luck. I want him to do well. I'm a Met fan, uh, but I just don't know how to feel about this. I don't. I don't know how to feel about any manager with no resume and with the inability to really do what he wants to do to put his imprint on a team. Now, one thing he, he admitted today that he's very excited about, listen to this. And I can't wait to meet and have deep conversations with Gary, Keith, and Ron. He said in the wrong order, though. No. It's Gary, Ron, and Keith, isn't it? Got Ron, Keith? Uh, got Ron, yeah. I don't know. Um... I think both are acceptable, right, Peter? The, the, the Mets told him to do that. No, but that's not necessarily the case. No, you know Met, why? Because no, Gary no. was there. He was hosting for SMY, guys, so he saw I, Gary there. I, I'm not trying to insult those guys. I'm trying to support my guy. I love it. It's just uh, it's it's the one thing the Mets have going for them. In, in wins and losses, they, they, they believe, and a lot of other people agree, they've got the best booth in baseball. So why wouldn't you put your best foot forward? In what other circumstance, Michael, in New York, would in the opening press conference a head coach or a general manager actually, actually talk about the broadcast team in the opening press conference? When? Well, maybe, he, maybe, maybe he was in, asked a question. I don't know. Sam Rosen is in the Hall of Fame. Literally in the Hockey Hall of Fame. I don't remember any Ranger head coach mentioning Sam Rosen in the opening press conference. It's just not something you do. So I'm sure the Mets told him, hey, let's put our best foot forward. Gary, Keith, and Ron, mention them. Again, it's, I'm not saying it's the wrong thing to do. It's probably the right thing to do. I, I don't think... It's one of the best things the Mets have going is that booth. I don't, but I don't think... I just find it I odd. Don't think they do that. I don't. But how would he know? He's, he's, he's been with the Yankees. Where was he before that? He's only been with the Yankees. Right, so so the Yankees are always playing the same time as the Mets. I can't imagine he can sit there and watch enough Met baseball to know how great they are. He may know that they're the Met announcers. Michael, there are managers. I'm going to tell you this, and this is not an insult. I would say the majority of head coaches and managers in New York have no, no idea who calls their games. That's not true. Well, how would they know? You on don't think Peter Laviolette knows that Sam Rosen the calls the game? Well, he probably knows because he watches the the, the film after and hears but the. But if you're a good announcer, you're in the you're you're there. You're you're around. You're but asking questions. It's not questions. about good or bad. I, I don't I, I don't know what they know, what they don't know. They got a lot going Hold on. Hold on, this is important information. I had to break in here. Breaking news. Uh, I don't know if you have a TV near you, Michael, but I just want you to know AJ Hawk is wearing sunglasses today, and it literally looks like a meme. No, no, his, his child, child ripped his cornea. His cornea. Oh, so I shouldn't make a joke no. about the glasses. No, it was bad because yesterday he had he had a patch. Now he's sans patch. Well, it doesn't change. By the way, it doesn't change the point of what I was going to say, though. You know, like the meme where it shows like the the the, the robotic glasses go on. Like it, it literally looks like robot glasses. What happened? Why does cornea get ripped out? No, there was an accident. The kid was, I think he was playing, playing with, with his child. No, oh, it okay. happens. The hands get. You got to protect yourself. So, so a scratch cornea. Yes. Got okay. I don't think anybody uh, anything too serious. Okay, but, good. But good, good. Uh, let me just say, uh, yeah, of course. When they get the job, Michael, they're going to be introduced to the announcers of the team, so they're going to know them. But I I don't know. Did Peter Laviolette, he probably knew Sam Rosen because he's been in the NHL for such a long time in Sands, but, in, in, but I don't know if he knows the inner workings of who does radio and who does TV and all that. I mean, I, I, I and, and in somebody who wasn't a part of the organization comes in and the opening press conference mentions them, I'm sure the Mets probably told them. Now, another or he is just a sick baseball fan that just knows possible. the in, 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 knows all about broadcasting in, in uh, the National American. Um, Joel Sherman writing that um, Mendoza is considering because he's uh, considers a mentor, and this will be a smart move. Doesn't seem like the Yankees are going to go for a veteran as a bench coach. He's thinking about bringing Willie Randolph aboard. I would like that. That would be awesome. Now would now would Willie do yes, it? Yes, I think he would. Because uh, I was going to say, I understand pride. Different owner, and but not even just the the uh, what happened to him, of just I'm a manager and I want my next chance to be as a manager, but I it's think been a long time, man. Sometimes you know, as time passes by, you got to do what you got to do, and 
if it gets him back to another managerial chance. And, heck, you know, I don't, I don't want to see it happen to Mendoza because I, I want to see him do well. But I would have no problem if the Mets had to make a managerial change in the middle of the season that he ended up becoming my manager again. I had no problem with him when he was here. I thought the Mets wronged him. Now the Wilpons are gone. Every, every, pretty much every aspect of the Mets have changed in that period of time. So if he wants to get a chance to come back, Michael, this is, I think, what you got to do. Um, he should be above it because I think he was a good manager. But you know what? Do what you can to try to get back. This is uh, a report from Shams Sharania. Uh-oh. It's the trade that keeps giving. The Nets' Ben Simmons has been diagnosed with nerve irritation on the lower left side of his body and will miss some time, according to his agent, Bernie Lee. He's already missed the past three games. They're not as good a team without him. Because even though he doesn't score 20 points a game, he does a lot when he's on the court. Facilitates the offense, rebounds, pushes the ball, pushes the pace. Mm. So Ben Simmons out again. This is some deal. And it's stink because they're trying to keep their head above water. I think they're going. I think they're trying to get above 500 tonight in their game. Are they five and five? And, and it, but it's just hard to gain any traction when you've got that kind of injury. Uh, and you're not those teams, right? You you look at. You look at the Knicks last night. R.J. Barrett out is devastating when you're going up against Boston. You can't afford to have those misses because you need to be whole if you're going to make any kind of run. So now how are you supposed to be whole when one of your best players is out? And R.J. Barrett misses one guy. I don't know. Has they Have they won a game with Barrett out? The Knicks? No. Well, no. They uh, they, they're def no, they, they, they're 0-4 with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, uh, it feels like, Don, this is a, a transitional Barrett year. I'm not saying he's going to take some huge step and become a superstar from where he's been in the previous years, but there does seem to be right. some noticeable impact he's having this year that he hasn't had in previous but seasons. The reason I'm bringing up Barrett to, to Simmons is it sounds like Simmons thing can be long-term. Now, it was just a migraine headache for R.J., but... Well, R.J. doesn't have a history. Well, I hope that there isn't something to... I mean, just it, it's odd... This year, that there's that, that he so would many, have a migraine. I, I just hope it's nothing too serious because he has just become such an important part. But, but the first one, the first game out was what, like well, a ankle or knee? Knee, knee, knee soreness. Yeah, you know, this, is, this is unrelated. But um, the point is, is that I think we know the Knicks and Nets are not where the Celtics and the Bucks are. But when they're whole, they can. I, I think they can dance... But if you if you're going to be missing any time with with any piece, they they can't afford to lose anybody, especially a Simmons. Now the uh, the Yankees officially announced their hitting coach James Rousen, who comes up through their system. He's had many jobs. He was a bench coach with Don Mattingly in Miami, uh, most recently assistant hitting coach with the Tigers, and he was asked about balancing the old and the new. And I can wait oh no to no, me that's Carlos and again. Have uh, deep this is uh, hey, James hey. Rousen battling the old and the new school as a hitting coach definitely there's a change in the game a lot of it is the language you know the language changes over time so you hear different language and different things over time a friend of mine used to be a pitching coach in major leagues i'd steal his line all the time mike butcher he should always say you know i'm not old school i'm not new school i'm in school and i would always kind of think that mindset was was what i was looking to accomplish i thought it was good so i looked at it that way i'm always in school right you can never forget what you've learned in the beginning that's the foundation that's what it's about in anything you do the foundation you can never leave that behind you also want to continue to try to get better so what i found over the years as a hitting coach with players as players come through different generations and players come through time a lot of it is matching the language you know where a player may talk about launch angle per se another player may consider it back spinning a line drive the right way you're trying to get into their mind to find out what they think and how they think and then at the end of the day you're looking at what they produce from what they think and it goes on to say that it, it's his job to speak the player's language I don't have a style, one style. I think the player creates their style, and you have to learn their style. So by doing that, what I'm trying to get at, like the long answer would be more, if a guy thinks one way and produces a result that's good, you stick to that thought. If there's another player who has the exact opposite thought of that and produces a positive result, you stick to that thought. I think your key is you don't pigeonhole a player into your philosophy. You learn what they think, what they produce, and that's how you move. And that's kind of the new style. So when you talk about the new A's, the analytics, or the different things that are coming into game what i look at it as it's like learning a new language so as a hitting coach your job is to learn a different language every time because that's the language that may resonate with a specific player it's not necessarily analytical it's what <laughs> language that the player speak and it's your job to learn that language what, what, what are we doing what are we doing what the hell's going on here? That, that, that we broke the record for the most uh, heading coaches ever said 
on radio. Not this station. Anywhere. James Robson. All right. I think he's got a beautiful voice. No, he's got a beautiful New voice, Rochelle. but I kind of zoned out after the first hour. All right, so Adam Schefter is reporting that James have released, uh, the Jets have released uh, running back Michael Carter. And we said yesterday, yeah. remember when Sala was on with us, and we said, you know, you don't discipline players publicly for, you know, have penalties. <laughs> and he, and he left us some breadcrumbs. He said, well, you know, mm. look. That, and we looked at the run sheet, and after Michael Carter committed a penalty he didn't play the rest of the game and now he's released so there are some ramifications if you commit a yeah. penalty they think it's stupid and you know when you look at running backs and production you know dalvin cook hasn't exactly been what we thought when they acquired him no you kind of know why maybe minnesota was moving on but now now you know that's they're gonna have to rely on him a little bit more unless they're gonna go get, go out and get somebody else remember remember when we thought the the Jets were loaded at running back earlier this season. Remember when we well, thought the Jets had great position players? It, 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 that that part, yeah, really has been. Yeah, that during, really, it's been it's been brutal. Uh, well, Cobb doesn't play. Cobb Lazard doesn't play. Lazard hasn't been good. Uh, Ozama I, I, hasn't like been to, good. And, and this and week, holds. by the way, this week in Peter's always right, even though he's a hack who knows nothing about football. <laughs> um, <laughs> Waller really changed things for the Giants. Uh, remember, Michael, when you and I got an argument because you were telling me Lazard is a great player, and I was like, he's a good player. He's not an offense-changing player. He's a guy Aaron Rodgers really likes. He's been a nothing burger. Randall Cobb is a 1,000 years old and is literally just Aaron Rodgers' friend. Dalvin Cook, I, they, they'll run him twice early, and then they just, I think he leaves the game. I think he's like, think he it's like building. he checks in, <laughs> and once he punches in at the office, he's like, well, all right, well, I got my hours. Well, I'm going home. Gone, he's going to get, the, I would think, some more looks. Oh, my and God. All of a sudden, which has now become an even bigger game, Jets-Bills on, on Sunday. Yeah, and by the way, oh. and, and how do you not talk about this as a winnable game? You know what? Going to talk about that in just a moment. Oh, great job. All right, we got a lot of Super stuff there. And then... Can we do some more James Rouse now? No, no. Listener mail. I think he's coming up at 6.30. At 4.45. Come celebrate the holidays at the all-new Genesis of White Park. Dinner al fresco. All worries forgotten. Broken fridge with food that is rotten. Birthday cake for everyone. This blown fuse is no fun. Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered parts of appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Sign up today at AHS.com. started when he ordered his brunt work boots. He's going on about how they're comfortable as sneakers. But he never takes them off. With his buddies at night, I caught him in the shower. And he just goes, what? They're waterproof. Brunt, the tools you wear. I'm Jesse Dover, co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Land and Carry All, a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry. After all, this city is a reflection of who I am, purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. Get tools that bring every angle of your beauty business together. Clients can book online 24-7 for multiple services and multiple staff, so scheduling is simple. 
And with client notes and stored payments, you can offer seamless checkouts. So clients keep coming back. Learn your beauty business with tools that bring everything together. Get started at Square.com today. Did you see that? Yep. Looks like rain. Also looks like... McDelivery. Order McDelivery in the app. I appreciate the fact that CarShield enables me to have a much less stressful, carefree life. With the flexibility to go where I want, when I want, not having to worry. A plan through CarShield pays for expensive repairs on your out-of-warranty car or truck. And with their price lock guarantee, CarShield's low monthly rate never goes up as long as you cover your car. My family depends on my truck every day. With a plan through CarShield, you can get protection over 5,000 major parts and systems. I'm talking big money items like your transmission, engine, electronics, and so much more. If any one of these breaks down, you could be stuck with thousands of repairs. So don't wait. You want peace of mind driving the car you love without worrying about a breakdown? Then call CarShield. Working for the Department of Defense, I know a thing or two about being prepared. And that's why I called CarShield. And you should too. If you love something, you protect it. That's why I call CarShield to protect my car. Plans through CarShield also include many extra benefits at no extra cost, like roadside assistance, free towing, help with flat or damaged tires, and lockout help. Don't pay for those things separately when you can get them included through a plan with CarShield. CarShield is here to keep you on the road and turn car breakdowns and the repair costs that follow to just tiny bumps in the road. Call now. Protect yourself from the unprecedented rise in cost for parts and repairs. Call now to save money with your price lock guarantee. Call when you think they're out they pull you back in the bills lost yesterday the bills lost to the broncos at home yesterday on a ridiculous 12-man penalty on a field goal to win the game that they missed so they get another try they kick the field goal and the bills lose today they fire their offensive coordinator Probably should fire the head coach, too. It's right there, Peter, for the Jets. All they have to do is score a touchdown oh, he, every now and then. Yeah. It's right there. But you, you, oh, you, yeah. just, you just mentioned the problem. You, you, the, the magic <laughs> word. All they have to do is the one thing they don't have the ability to do. But but they, despite All their Griffin ineptitude, though, All Griffin has to do right? is sleep with Sidney Crawford tonight. Right. But the, and but and the, you know what I'm saying. The, despite their ineptitude, the, the football gods are not letting them play out. Yeah, but this kind of... I agree with you that the avenue is there. I just don't think they've got the vehicle to make it work. Now, can they beat the Bills? Sure. They've got the Bills number. The problem with Buffalo is they turn the ball over. The Jets thrive on turnovers, and maybe they're able to get a touchdown off of that. I mean, if, if the Jets win the turnover battle for nothing, they're going to win. They're going to beat They're going to beat Buffalo. But it, does that mean that all of a sudden now they can beat Miami twice to win this division? That they're going to be able to here's, finish with a better record than Pittsburgh and Cleveland and Cincinnati. Here's and, all, and all the teams on. they're going to need to beat to be a wild card team. Here's all it means to me. When people start jumping right to the it's over conversation, this year you have to say not so fast. Yeah, well, Great point. Because you were, if you, here's the way you looked at it, and it's logical. You have to get the Raiders game. If you don't get the Raiders game, where are the wins coming from? What last night shows you is that you could stumble into a win next I, week against Buffalo. Uh, no, and, and then the Ra Raiders win well, doesn't matter. I think the better way to say it is, can the Jets beat Buffalo? Yes, they can. So that kicks the can down the road, keeps them alive another week. 
but is is it sustainable? Are they going to be able to beat Miami? Are they going to be able to beat Atlanta? Are they going to be able to beat the teams they have left on their Houston, schedule? Houston, Washington, Houston. Well, I mean, th- th- those are really good teams. Now, I look at I, they can beat New England. They should be able to beat New England, even though they never do. They should be able to win, but they might be out of it by the time they get to the last week of the but season. But you know what I'm saying, Don? If the, if the Bills won yesterday, they'd be six and four. The Jets would be buried essentially. So they open the door for the Jets, and I get what you're saying. You got to play well, and they haven't played well offensively. But it's right there for them if they somehow discover a fountain of offense. I I don't agree. I mean, I, I agree they can beat Buffalo and be five and five. Oh, you don't think they can beat the Dolphins? I I don't. With that, uh, not, with their not as defense? presently constituted. Not as you know, not not without scoring touchdowns. But they'll score touchdowns right right defensively, now. maybe. I, my, I, Michael, I don't all of a sudden think that because Buffalo is is a mess that all of a sudden the Jet like magic waters sprinkled on the Jets. They still are what they are. They had three very winnable games, went one and two in those three winnable games, and the one game they did win was handed to them by the Giants. So that still all exists. Now, I agree with you. They can beat Buffalo because Buffalo is a mess right now. So now you get the five and five. So maybe you hit finish ahead of Buffalo. What does that have to do with Miami? What does that, what, what does that have to do with finishing above Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Houston, Vegas, Los Angeles to be able to get a wild card? It doesn't. All it does is, and I will agree with you, maybe gives the Jets a win you didn't think they'd be able to get. But... Outside of that, I don't know how it affects them being able to move forward. Well, They're still going to have to get to, to 10 wins. How are they doing that? Do you think they have to get to 10 wins now, the way everybody's losing? Well, all right, Miami. Is Miami going to get to 10 wins? They're 6-3. and three. They're a really good foot. I know they haven't beaten anybody of significance. I think they're they're going to get to 10. All right. They're getting, they're getting their 10. Now Pittsburgh six and three, Cleveland six and three, Cincinnati's five and four. You think those you think those teams have a, a better chance of getting the ten than the Jets do or nine? Houston right now is the hottest team in football. Vegas has the tiebreaker. The Chargers have the tiebreaker. So there's not a lot going for the Jets right now, other than the fact that they might be able to get five and five easier than you thought before that game last night against Denver. At least they got the Denver win. Yep. And in and, and, and Denver's another example, mess, give up 70 points, complete mess. And now they're finding, you know, a way to be four and five but, with a quarterback that looked like he was done, a defense that couldn't stop anybody. But now they've kind of righted so, their so ship. Now I'm, I'm in the unusual position of defending the Jets. All right. So so let me put it to you this way. Would you both agree that Zach Wilson on Sunday night, looked like more of a quarterback than he's looked all year for an entire game. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the, maybe yeah, it was just something. Second or third best game. Right. Maybe. No, no. Full game. Best full game, I think. Kansas City. Well, Kansas, Kansas, Kansas City. City. No, he played He played well. But, but he, no, they were not 17 down. nothing. They had that one great drive. I thought he was, he, he, as you said yesterday, Don, right. from the 20 to the 20, he moved the ball very well, made some really good passes. Yeah, he scored Showed maneuverability, City, escapability, right. good arm. So maybe he takes another little baby step. Who okay. knows? But now they do have Buffalo's number. Again, I agree. I mean, I would feel pretty good about them uh, beating Buffalo even if that field goal was good last night because they, they seem to have Buffalo's number. But what is, what is Buffalo's problem? I don't know. Their, their problem is offense and turning the ball over. I think they got a pretty good defense, certainly better than the Raiders' defense. So if the Jets play better than they did against the Raiders, do we know they're going to score? A touchdown? Do we know they're going to get the points necessary to beat Buffalo? You know, so I agree that that's a winnable game. I thought it was always a winnable game. They almost won there last year in Buffalo, and they seem to have Buffalo's number. But I just don't know how that relates to the Jets moving forward and all of a sudden making the Jets better because they might actually be better than Buffalo. They still have to be better than Miami. They still have to be better than Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Vegas, Los Angeles, a bunch of teams that they have to be better than in order to be able to make the playoffs. So so by your logic then, Michael, they might have a better chance of winning the division than getting a wild card. I, I, because only one team, because if they beat Buffalo, which I think they can, they'd hold the tiebreaker, they'd be in second place. They'd only have one team to pass in Miami, and they have them twice. So Miami, I believe, is playing... Who are they playing again, Anthony? We were just talking about it before the show, Miami. The Raiders. All right. So if, if 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 let's say Miami beats the Raiders, 
They'll go to seven and three. The Jets win. They'll be two games back of Miami, but have two games with Miami. So it sounds like what you're saying is that they should. The division's probably more wide open than than the Wild. I think everything's open. It's only one team. Uh, the AFC is not as stout as we thought it is. All the teams in front of them could lose a lot of games. I can't have a conversation about a football team making the playoffs that can't score touchdowns. Well, I, I hear what you're saying. So then you can't have a conversation at all about them winning the division either. I'm just saying no, that the, 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 the avenue is open for them because the teams in front of them are bad. There's no dominant team. But, but when you factor in something being open, you also have to factor in the team's ability to step through that open window. And I, I don't have faith the Jets can do that. To, How could you have any faith the Jets can do I that? I don't have faith. I'm just saying it's, it's there for them if they suddenly discover it. Now what, now, what should be frustrating to the Jet fans is where would they be if they won the games they were supposed to win? Now, the Charger game, they played awful, and they weren't really in the game. But they, that Raider game was right there for them. If they had won that Raider game, like, Mike, like Peter was talking about, they'd be in great shape. They would have won two of the three games, and now they'd be going in with a little momentum, and they would have a 6-4 and four record. They'd be ahead of Buffalo now. You wouldn't have to worry about Buffalo except for the game you've got. You've passed them. They wouldn't be 6-4. They and four. They'd be 5-4. Five and four. Uh, five, Excuse me. They'd be 5-4 um, and four because of the, they, had, they had the bye. And then, then you could beat Buffalo. Now you're talking about something, Michael. But what happened against the Raiders happened. The penalties that don't go away. The inability to score in the red zone that has existed all year long. So I agree with you. There's an avenue. I just don't know if they can possibly take advantage of it. To win the division, Dolphins are minus 450. Bills are plus 400. Jets are plus 1,500. To make the playoffs, the Jets, if you think they will, that's plus 500. No, minus 750. And the Jets' updated win total is seven and a half. So they're at four and five right now. They play the Bills this Sunday, mm -hmm. and the Bills are five and five. So Sunday at right. 425. But what you're doing is, is that you're keeping your season alive. If you beat Buffalo, then Friday you've got Miami, so then it's, then it's on. And if you, if, if you do that, then if you start taking advantage, Michael, then I can start to believe. But just like the giant conversation a few weeks ago, I'm basing on is the team capable of doing that? And... Are they capable of taking advantage of this, what looks to be an, a, a, a glorious opportunity for a team that can't score a touchdown? So they are very much alive. Can they take advantage of it? What would you say? Do you think they can? If they take advantage of, of what? What they have in front of them. Can, of course. You said the window's open. Can they do it? Can, my, you're asking me straight out, can they do it? My answer is yes. no. I think that's the only answer until they prove otherwise. But, but all I'm saying, I, I think we're on the same path here, is that it, the door remains open for them to walk through it. When the, when whether or not they have the ability to walk through it, it's a different story. The teams in yes. front of them are not dominant. They're not running away with anything. Uh, how about this? Can we solve it this way? If a magic pill was swallowed by Zach, and he all of a sudden became a normal, perfunctory quarterback who was capable of getting the end zone on occasion... Don, you would agree that you could have hope for this season. Of still. course. But that's, that, that, that's it. Well, Don, just, John just over-believing that that might happen. If, 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 they, if they lost to the Raiders in a great back-and-forth game, scored some points, just didn't catch the breaks. But you're, you're, you're not scoring. Why? You can't score touchdowns. The self-inflicted wounds, it's because they, they should forget about uh, all gas, no break. It's a self-inflicted wound should be on a T-shirt when Sala goes to the press conference after games because that's become their mantra now over the last month. Self-inflicted wound. How are, you, how are you supposed to take advantage of this? When you're committing dumb penalties, you can't handle prosperity, you can't score any touchdowns, can't do anything in the red zone. And, and, and good luck with your defense continuing to carry you if they've got to be on the field the whole game. Right, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Jose in Connecticut. Jose... Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Um, before I get to my point, um, Don, I don't know how you haven't ever slugged Dave for being a Cowboys fan. I just didn't realize that your brother was a Cowboys fan. How'd that happen? It was because he, he's that guy. He just, he, 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 he was, <laughs> when, he, when he followed baseball back as a kid, he was a Yankee fan because the house were full of Met fans. He just likes to go. Go against the grain, and it drove my dad crazy. He loved my dad.
but for whatever reason, he just loved tweaking them. And being a Cowboy fan, and believe me, hey, uh, how old are you? I'm 41. All right, so you don't remember. In 1981, the Giants made the playoffs for the first time since 1963, thanks uh, to beating the Cowboys. My brother. The quarterback come in, and for me, the person that's been skating the most besides Salah has been Nathaniel Hackett. He stinks, and like right now, Zach is taking all the blame, right? And if you put another quarterback in there and he stinks, people are going to start turning to his coaching staff and saying, "Look, Hackett stunk last year in Denver. He stinks now." Wait, 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 wait! Hackett stunk as a head coach. Hackett's done a good job. In Green Bay, did a good job with Jacksonville. He's not going anywhere. If he does go somewhere, then Aaron Rodgers well, is probably not coming back. That's it's just wrong. And also, I mean, I, I almost pulled my hair out. I'm being too nice. Peter, help me out. I'm being too nice to Zach. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? I've I been against Zach since day one. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, but you're choosing in this moment to have a shred of optimism, which I think makes sense. Only on the strength of how bad everyone else but, is playing. But wouldn't you agree? He, he, I thought he played okay. Yeah, he played okay. It, 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 this has not served him well. He's not ready for this stage. He's not a good enough quarterback, and the Jets should have had somebody else. But I'm not going to sit here and say, you make a quarterback change going into this game, because coming off that game, it would be stupid no, to change the quarterback. It wouldn't make sense. I, I agree. agree. No, but, he, he played well. But again, but it's the third time enough. he's done that this year, probably. A game where he... He takes a step forward, and then you're like, oh, let's see what happens next week, and then it goes back. But let's see it. First of all, let's not give them an automatic win against Buffalo anyway. No. All right, so they still have a lot of work to do because I'm sure, you know, Buffalo with their team. We saw what happened with the Raiders when they made changes, and we'll see if this change to the offense. When he has a quarterback that can play his system, I think it works. Bortles. Bortles, it worked. Rodgers, of course it's going to work. For whatever reason. Protect.com and get a free quote today. Why are you still scrolling through videos? You're not paying me overtime here. If you really want to see something new, why not change those shades that have been broken for the past two years? Let's tap the Thumbtack app, and in a matter of seconds, we'll find a pro to install new shades. Okay. With Thumbtack, you can easily find top-rated professionals for every home project. Thumbtack, the easy way to care for your home. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> fashion. There's an e Visit colonialpen.com for more in I'm Jesse Dover. 
co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Landon Carry All, a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry. After all, this city is a reflection of who I am, purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. So you can always be prepared and enjoy the important things. Sign up for Butcher Box today. Up your fan engagement with Yes Rewards on the Yes app. Watch live games and earn points. Play the hottest games and score more. Earn status, then redeem your points to win prizes. Yes Rewards on the Yes app. Did you see that? Yep. Looks like rain. Also looks like... McDelivery. Order McDelivery in the app. Today scratch off games from the New York Lottery. Let's get it. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Sign and drive a Hyundai Palisade with zero down, zero first month's payment, and zero security deposit. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. When I hit 80, I needed help around the home. A friend of mine told me to call Freedom Care, and they'll pay my granddaughter to take care of me. Funded by Medicaid, Freedom Care allows people to choose who provides their care, and the caregiver gets paid instantly after their shift. Life is sweeter with her around. Nana gave me so much joy as a child. Now it's my turn to return the love. Call now to find out benefits and pay, and how fast you can get started. Dive into win reality. Experience expert coaching right from home. Master your timing, track your progress, prepare for any situation. So when your moment comes, you'll be ready. Address is tmkspn at gmail.com. So we're going to do this every now and then. Uh, this is from Thomas Luciano. First time, long time. I've been a Yankee fan since 2005. Love the show. I'm 22 years old. Listened every day since sixth grade. Not sure if there's a marker of stability or not, but that's neither here nor there. Here are my top 10 TMKS callers. Number one, Morris in Long Island. Number two, Richard in Long Island. Number three, Spike in St. Pete, New Jersey. Number four, Ira in Staten Island. Number five, Harry and Englewood Cliffs. And he wants to know, Don, who are you taking out? Well, unfortunately. We give, give them one more time. That was Morris, Richard, Ira. Spike and Harry. Spike and Harry. Who are you taking out? It's tough. You can't really take any of them out. I mean, well, Morris yeah, is I would take out with more us, than one. I, well, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. All of them. They all got to go. David Rosenberg. No, but as far as, like, the best calls, now nah, we're taking Ira out. Come on, who are we kidding? No, well, he, he, took, him, anyway. he took himself out. 
Yeah. Jeremy Betts writes, hi, hi, guys. I'm Jeremy from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Michael, just wanted to say I got your book and started reading it when my wife had her surgery. Started listening to the podcast back in the spring after I heard about it from our local hockey announcer. There was a hockey game where the goalie got into a fight. Michael brought it up on the show. When I listened, I thought you guys were great. I now listen to the show every day live. Hmm. How about that? So there's a, high, there's a goalie fight. Right. And then... Uh, the center stage book popped into his yeah. head instead of calling a goalie fight? Yeah. I don't I, Can someone explain? I'm confused. Is there something wrong with me? Yes. This is from Alex Blyweiss. It makes sense? Hi, no. TMCast. Okay. I'm a P1 fan of TMCast. I listen to the podcast every day. Consider myself to be a disciple of K. I've been able to call in because I work during the show, but just want to say how much I'm looking forward to cru cruising on Celebrity Apex with the Kester. It's such a special experience to me, and I've been looking forward to it every day. My wife is pregnant. No longer able to go, so I'll be going solo. That's not right. You gotta stay with your wife. I've taken the liberty to come up with some well, activities that I think Michael has to take part in. Monday Night Football pizza on the chest. Build me a buttercup karaoke. NBA in-season tournament championship fully nude. Wow. I should also say that professionally I'm a therapist. Hope this doesn't scare you away. Love the show and all three of you guys. Looking forward to a sit-down with Michael. Take that, Ira. Wow, and he's getting that. He's going to get that sit-down when Michael's... Sitting on a boat for a week straight. Paul Brown, I'm an Englishman living in... And Paul Brown? Yeah. No, the, the, <laughs> wow. I'm the dead. Wow. I'm an Englishman living in Queensland, Australia. Your show is the best. I listen to this full show every day, a mixture of live and or podcasts. Made me follow New York teams, even though I have absolutely no link to America or New York. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I made sure to do the capital NNY so not to annoy Dom. He put that in quotes. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Do you guys miss, who do you guys miss most of the people who have worked on and then left your show? Wow. Oh, that's that, a that, great. See, now, fine. See, it now took a few, but it took a few, but here we are. Um, Ryan was good, right? Ryan, we miss Ryan. Well, that's, I, that, I, that sounded I, convincing. I miss Michelle. I miss, I miss Gunling. Really? I miss Gunling and RJ. I, I, I think, um, I, I, I don't want to offend anyone. Because well, every, everyone contributes. I'm sorry. I, I just I, I said Michelle just because I've, I, I've only seen see her, her once in the, in the decades since I she left. I see her every week, so I don't miss her at all. Yeah. Um, Over the top available now. But no, but but from a personal standpoint, it would probably be, I would have to go with Andrew. Yeah, I, I think because of the recency in which he was such an integral part of the show and for how long he was, I think the answer has to be Andrew. Of course. Oh, I, I love this guy. Yeah, well, see? you know what? I, we're, we're missing a big one, Don. What's that? I kind of miss Joey. Oh, well. Mm. It's been a long time, though. Well, but I see Joey. I, I, unlike you, when I'm in Dallas, see I see Joey swing by once a year, him. Skippy. It's not that's like. That's right. And you know what? That's, but we, that's, 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 that's a nice little bit. We're missing as Joey adult, on the show. Regular. You could see him. You're still missing him every day. You, you, you two used to have these dark conversations in the morning. Yeah. And if you remember, we used, I, I, I one time threw a bobblehead at him. I mean, we did have our uh, our issues as well. I'd say I, was, I miss Joey and then Andrew. <laughs> Joey, Andrew, and Then RJ. Oh, yeah. Well, Ryan was our boss. You know what, time. Skippy? This isn't an answer. You're just naming everyone who was ever on the show. Right. Joey. Joey won over Andrew. Yeah. Wow. How about I Gigi? Can't. You didn't yeah. even, I'm glad you still remember because yeah. you didn't even bring her up as you listed everybody yeah, up. Yeah, but just when you talk about the time, we, we, we worked with Andrew way longer than anybody. And, yeah, I, I would have Andrew What about Joey. Chris Mitchell? He's not high on the yeah, list? You know, Andrew's first. Joey's second. All right. What about Tom Krasnicki? You forgot yeah. him. Uh, Michael Slissel says, Don, how would you sum up Kane's short tenure in New York, and do you think he's worth pursuing again as a free agent? Hmm. Yeah, if the price is right, I'd bring him back. And as far as uh, him, his tenure in New York, there was nothing. It was a nothing burger, as Peter likes to say. And finally, Cody Dilworth asks, with Rodgers saying to NBC he's coming back mid-December, if he comes back for the Christmas Eve game against the Commanders, how many wins would the Jets need to have by that game for Rodgers to actually risk coming back and playing. Well, I think he's coming back no matter what the... If he wants to prove a point. I think he's coming back no matter what the win total is. The, 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 there are three left. The, the commanders are one of the last three. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Christmas Eve, New Year's Day, and then the f last week? Yeah, the last game, it's it, yeah, it's, it's commanders, Browns, Patriots, I believe. So, so, and right now they've played nine, correct? They're four mm -hmm. and five. So it's between nine and 14. How many of those games... They'd have to win. Minimum would be two of these, if not three. Right between I would now say and then, three. But he's but Pete Michael's right. He's going to come. He's going to come back no matter what, even if they still have four wins. Now, 
this is the first time we've done the mail segment in a while. Mm. What's with the insipid music under us? Where did you get that music? It sounds awful. What is it? Why choose that? Why? I feel like I'm playing Wii. Listen, you, you know, you're bad. You're really bad. Guy. I just want to yeah. know behind the, Be behind the music, why? Because we were trying to, we're, listen, if you wanted to be involved with the things that you did on the show, you didn't just say, hey, get this done. Conversations are had about what direction to this go. This music and you try is dreadful. Things. And also, oh. uh, the direction of the mail is not the way I thought it was going to be. I want to be well, like Howard Stern. Hey, I like that interaction I had with Ira yesterday. Hey, that was a great interview with uh, with Sala. Hey, what does Don do during? Uh, don't ask us questions that we we pretty much could do on the air with a with a with a phone call. Well, I'm glad we've given this some direction now moving forward. You agree? It's, it's, well. Mm. How's the back of your belly? Something like that. Well, then that's what you get. That's what you get. And if we don't get them, we don't read them. How's the back of your? I don't know if we want how's the back of your belly per se. But I think this went very well. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I it, we listen. It, it was, it was week one. We need to have some more focus. You know what? It would be W E A K one. Wow. Hey, Pantera is coming to Madison Square Garden on Thursday, February 22nd. Enter for a chance to win tickets at ESPNNewYork.com or on the ESPN New York app. Just scroll down to contest, submit your entry. Brought to you by Live Nation. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. at Ticketmaster.com. Now, Aaron Rodgers spoke today. Aaron Rodgers is a, is a different bird. Let's put it that way. He said some things that are somewhat odd. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll break it down. I believe he's going to play no matter what the win total is because he's trying to prove a point. Anyway, first, Peter's going to tell us about Dodgers. You're finally mastering Grandma's 12-hour sauce. Your stovetop gave out in the 11th hour. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems. Protect what you don't expect. Visit AHS.com and get a free quote today. Can a handyman fix my leaky faucet? How much does it cost to have my HVAC checked? How do I know I have more? What do water pipes raise? Home questions don't have to keep you up at night. Get peace of mind with Thumbtack. We'll connect you with local pros for any home project, from a small fix to a big remodel. See transparent prices, read verified reviews, and book with just a tap. Thumbtack, the easy way to care for your home. We just shipped our millionth monthly coffee subscription box. We're sending custom thank you gifts to everyone on our team who helped us get there. I had to call Eric at Custom Inc. Custom Inc. has been with us from the beginning, and he makes sure that we get everything we need and even reminds us of our own company milestones. This milestone, though, I get to tell him about. He is every bit as excited as we are and knows great quality products we can customize and send for the gifts. Celebrate all your milestones with custom gear. Get started today at customink.com. and supply chain shortages. This may be your last chance to get your very own Battle Vision Storm at this low price. There is a strict limit of four Battle Vision Storm per order while supplies last. Don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-513-3180. That's 1-800-513-3180 or visit BattleVisionStorm.com. So call 1-800-513-3180 now. <laughs> How about a pocket full of cash to spend on a tropical vacation, sports car, you name it. Because with jackpots on DraftKings Casino, you can turn 10 cents into tens of thousands, even over a million. On roulette, slots, blackjack, baccarat, and more. Jackpot winnings are at 25 million and counting this year. And the next could hit any second. So score the latest jackpots offer when you get America's number one online casino app. 
DraftKings Casino, the crown is yours. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. Yeah. Play band. <sighs> Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Oh, man. So Aaron Rodgers spoke today. It's Tuesday, so it's uh, Pat McAfee Day. And Aaron had some things to say, as he always does. So Melissa Stark on Sunday Night Football reported that she spoke to Rodgers, and Rodgers said that um, could be back by the middle of December. So Rogers has asked about Stark's mid-December report. Here's Aaron. As far as what I talked to Melissa Stark about, I never said anything definitive. She talked about in a conversation with my amazing doctor, if it would be insane to try and come back in three months. And he responded about the fact that when you bring together a specific type of surgery with a specific patient with the specific amount of stubbornness and desire to get back on the field and obviously playing quarterback, then there's a possibility. But nothing's changed as far as my timeline. It's we got to be in the mix. And I got to be healthy, and I definitely still want to come back. So he throws in, you got to be in the mix. I don't believe it. I, I, I believe the Jets could lose every game until that point, and if he could come back, he's going to come back because he's trying to prove a point on his own. He just wants to show he's Superman oh, yeah. and that he chose the great doctor, which he did, and that he's, he's unbelievable when it comes to determination and listening to Dolphins fornicate, all of that stuff. He's playing no matter what the record is. It, is it just me or is it getting kind of old? Like like oh, every it's get, Tuesday, it's getting old. It's been, I mean, they kept showing him as if he was a coach on Sunday night. Right. Yeah, but that that's fine. I get it. It's it's eye candy for some people, but just the whole he he does something on Sunday, some comments made on Monday, his retort on Tuesday at McAvee. It just it, it's a vicious cycle. Well, all right, when you're ready to play, play. All right. We got a season going on here. They're the only team that's relevant right now in the NFL here in New York. The Jet, the Giants are done. The Jets are barely hanging on. We've got plenty to talk about with that. I, I'm just, I'm good. When he's ready to play, all for it. Come back and play. But this, like the the constant drama surrounding it, Michael, it just, uh, I kind of had it. It just seems like it's a, every Tuesday I come in. All right, what 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 did Aaron say? And it it's all ends up being the same thing, keeping you on the hook that he might come back, but is he any closer to coming back? Well, so why wasn't it a big deal he didn't throw? He said he wasn't feeling it. So what, what is that? Were we supposed to read into that? Did he, did he take a step all back? All right, so here's, here's the question. Did you suffer a setback because he didn't throw? Sunday was my off day starting my rehab process and that's obviously shifted a little bit last week Sunday you know we had a Monday night game so I was off Sunday I flew red eye so Monday being able to move around so that was more in the rehab mindset where I'm not just stationary all day and the previous weeks I've used kind of my flying day as my off day so this last week Saturday I got a great long session to rehab in and flew over to Vegas had dinner with Devante walked around a little bit as was noted a couple fan interactions and then Sunday was a complete off day. So on the off days, I really want to get myself completely off. Like, obviously, I'm still walking and pacing the sidelines, but I need at least one day off every single week. So that was planned there. No setbacks. Uh, he, was also, he also said that he's going to be back with the team full-time Thanksgiving. I'm going to be back there full-time real soon. Really? Ooh. Ooh. No, that's, that's always been the plan. The plan has been, once we got to Thanksgiving, was to be back there full-time. I heard you make a slight side comment there, DB. But oh, no, but I got some breaking you, news. That feels like that's ticker-worthy. Yeah, that's that's ticker-worthy. Yeah. That's ticker worthy. You're going back to Thanksgiving. No. Now, no, it's not. he talked about the offensive struggles of the Jets. Yeah, it's tough because we're nine games in. You know, I think a lot of the issues that we're, we're having are the ones we've had for a lot of the season. Not being efficient in the red zone, not being opportunistic on third down. We're very low in both those categories. This game, we actually got in the end zone, looked like twice. Zach got in, got called back. He was out of bounds, which was a millimeter call there. And then we scored a rushing touchdown, called back on a holding, took points off the board, had another reverse, called back on a holding that was first down that put us in good position. We had some other opportunities to score points, I Think. So it's a lot of the same things hurting us every week. But you don't get the ball in the end zone, you're not going to win many games. It doesn't matter who's playing defense for you. And our defense has been fantastic. But four field goals, six points previous week, 13 the previous week, and a win, not good enough. There's a lot of geniuses out there with ideas about how to fix the whole thing. But in actuality, very simple. If you watch the film, you could see where the issues lie. And there's plays to be made. There's opportunities that are out there, and we're just not getting it done. And finally, he said it's not just on Hackett and Zach. 
I won MVP twice in the same offense, so I'm a believer in the offense, and there's a lot of positions you gotta you gotta play better. Yeah, it's easy right now to throw it at the, the usual suspects, Zach and, and Nathaniel, but there's a lot of positions that need to play better. But he won the MVP twice in this offense. He's him. Zach Wilson's not him. The offense might not fit what Zach Wilson does well. I don't think they've tailored the offense enough to Zach Wilson. It's still Aaron Rodgers. They don't have pre-snap motion because Rodgers doesn't like that. Maybe Zach needs it. Finally, I saved this one for last. Mm. Last time he was on last week, you know, he he was talking, I, I guess, um, about um, the COVID vaccine, whatever, and then ESPN's feed went out for 12 minutes. So... People think that the feed was cut because he was getting into his conspiracy stuff. Um, well, he got into that a little bit today, so listen to this. There's not a lot of people that have the unique situation that I was in. I got hurt in the first drive of the season. Don't want to retire. I want to come back. I got the best doctor in the country. My full-time job is rehab. And my mindset from the morning after the surgery, or the, the injury, before I even got surgery, was I'm going to try and do something that nobody's done before. So I poured my entire energy and research into this. And, I mean, I wasn't even a question whether or not I was going to use Neil. It was, all right, what are the best rehab modalities where should i rehab Love. what can i do at home what can i add to it and who's done anything in this realm before so i talked with a number of people who torn their achilles and listened to what they like what worked the majority of those people a lot of them athletes awesome people and i'm so thankful for the time they were on different timetables though they were thinking listen we're gonna get this thing back and get back to competition but not in a rush and i feel like i want to get back so i'm more rushed because my time is nearing the end i don't have as many years left as a Clay Thompson or some of these, you know, amazing athletes who've been hurt earlier in their career. I want to get back on the field. So my whole goal the entire time is how can I get back on the field? What can I do from a diet standpoint, from a modality standpoint, from a daily rehab standpoint in order to put myself in position to play as quick as possible? It was ruptured. It was fixed by the best doctor in the land. And my entire focus from September 13th has been rehab and get back on the field. All right, so that's the first time he said it was ruptured. And uh, the one thing that we didn't have on that cut is is that he said, you know, ESPN might, you know, they might, um, I want to get it right. It's in an off. What was that, Anthony? That they might cut oh, they the went, feed. He said, um, they might cut the feed when I start to talk about this. Uh, he said, you know, he doesn't like the conspiracy theory that it, it was not a ruptured Achilles. So, according to Awful Announcing, they said it very, very well. So, he'll entertain conspiracies about COVID about vaccines, aliens, 9-11, being censored by ESPN. But you better not have a conspiracy theory that he's not really dealing with a ruptured Achilles. As I said at the end of the 4 o'clock hour, this is an interesting, complicated dude. Is that your nice way of saying annoying? No, 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 I be, I, because I find him, I, I think I chose the word interesting for real. He's interesting. I, I think but he's, he's a also, very bright guy, but yeah. he's complicated. Am I, so, Don, tell me the truth. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll lay it all on the line. I get it wrong every day. And I have to admit, I'm like, his voice is starting to become like white noise week to week because mm -hmm. you're not playing. You just talk for an hour every week. And I, I can't blame you for that. By the way, there's nothing else to do. I totally get it. But, like, it just it came, it sound, felt annoying today. Am I wrong? Am I a bad guy? It, just, it, it, it did feel. It, it felt, it, I just, like, I was like, uh, uh, are you coming back? You're not. Like, I, like I'm, I'm good. In this, uh, all right, you're, you're rehabbing. I get it. Now let's. Look. Like when you play, let me know when you're ready to play. I'm ready. Right? And I'm, then, by the way, I'll be stoked and watching and rooting for you. I, 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 week to week, I have the update, never I, seen, and there have been some amazing athletes that have been in his situation. You know, Kevin Durant was in that situation. We saw Dan Marino, Phil Sin Like, there's been so many players that get hurt that are lost for the season. Will they come back? Won't they come back? And they go away, and they either come back or they don't. I've never seen a rehab play out in real time like this before in my life. Honestly, now we have the technology, and he's got a weekly with McAfee, so there's like a perfect storm of information. But, Michael, can you think ever in any sport somebody rehabbing an injury in real time like this? Where we're, we're literally getting constant updates. We're getting them when the Jets play. We're getting them from, like, Sala during the week. Every Tuesday we get an update from McAfee uh, here. Something said before the game that gets regurgitated by a reporter. It, it's just amazing. I'm good. 
All right, you're hurt. You might come back. Let me know when you come back. But uh, I guess the thing that, that makes it such a big story is he, he, he's very articulate, and he certainly can talk his way out of anything. And he thinks he's smarter than everybody else, so he, he wants to show that. And also he's trying to do something that simply has never been done, even close to being done, ever. Cam Akers is the closest. And this is going to, like, dwarf that by two, three right. months. Well, it, and he, it, or, he's also or, or a Hall won't. of Fame quarterback. So that's why it's interesting to people, Don. But it's only interesting because he has put the carrot out there that he might come back early. Or he might. I never said I would. I'm not putting any kind of timetable on. It, it's coming from him. Well, it becomes less interesting if the Jets are not in it. Because, right. I, I still think he'll play, but him coming back and leading them to the promised land means nothing. It'll just be him showing everybody but, how, how determined he was to get back. But I'm kind of. But it's, isn't every athlete determined to come back? Like the, they're all trying to come back. They're all going through the rehab. It's just that he's doing it right now, where there's the constant updates. I mean, you can't take any bows for something that hasn't happened yet. I mean, if he does come back and play way before head of time, well, I'll be the first it, to say, "Wow, that's amazing!" But it hasn't happened yet. But it makes the effort makes sense, given as he mentioned the timeline that he has. Right? He has very limited time. I get being very anxious to to come back, no matter what. I just worry about whether or not that's the smartest play. Is rushing it back well, this year? See, that's the other you're thing. just being a little childish. Wait till next year, get a full two years. Because let's be honest, guys, if he were to come back right now and God forbid four plays in, it happens again. It's over. It's so there's no miracle story that's going to be. To me, that would just be the absolute end. So unless they're really in position to do something special, and Don, as we've been pointing out, it seems like now we've exposed that the weaknesses on this team are not just a quarterback. Position-wise, they're not as good. Will they be much better when they get Aaron Rodgers back? Sure, but he's not going to miraculously yeah, I, improve every position. I'm with Michael. I think he is going to come back to defy the odds, but you're, you're right. Does it make sense if this team is out of it, you know, in week 15, and he comes back to play the last three weeks just to show everybody that he could? Is that a good idea? But have you ever seen, you know, you asked me a question. Games? Let me ask you another one. In all your time around sports, have you ever seen one player dominate and take the oxygen out of the room like Aaron Rodgers has with the Jets. He is the Jets. He's the power broker on the Jets. He's calling the shots. He'll put the roster together. He's got a headset on and is communicating with the offensive coordinator and the coach. I've never seen that, ever. Have you ever seen any player take the air out of the room like Aaron Rodgers? Well, how about this? The add to that, Michael. Have you ever seen a player take the air out who has not done anything of significance for the team? Yeah, other than change the perspective coming in, right? Which about which that and 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 how much is the subway now? Two seventy five. That'll get you two ninety. That'll get you on the subway. Because I mean, it, it it would be like it would be one thing to say, Michael, that after the sixth ring or the fourth ring, the the amount of air that Michael Jordan took up was just oh my god. But he'd won multiple championships. He was the face of the... In, in the case of Rodgers, he's a really great story, and he's really compelling. His entire thing is based on hope. Here is, uh, here's the Rodgers cut I was re referring to on McAfee. About ES ESPN will cut off the broadcast. I mean, I have some very interesting thoughts that ESPN would probably try and cut off the broadcast if I started really getting into Ooh. how I feel about... Mm. What could that have been? Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't even fathom. <laughs> what that could, I couldn't even fathom. They're talking about your uh, Achilles. We're yeah. talking about your Achilles, but not, maybe not being yeah, born. The and same, people, you love yeah. conspiracies. What do you mean? Yeah, the it, same people talking about that, you know. The, the, it's inter entertaining the possibility of conspiracy about my Achilles. Could not possibly fathom a world in which anything related to this beautiful experimental gene therapy could be, you know, it could have any any issues with that. Okay. Fascinating. Uh, Fascinating. Okay. Right. So I just went into it. They probably just cut the feed. He's uh, he's just Can someone. He's uh, hey, most. someone. Hey, someone. Pretend I'm a moron. What is he talking about? I think he thinks that when he talks about like stuff like medicine and stuff like that, that ESPN doesn't want to hear. I don't blame him. He's he not was saying that w why believe a conspiracy theory about my Achilles not being ruptured if you, but you are against the idea of any conspiracy theories regarding medicine or vaccines and things of that. But he just used the term gene therapy. He used that term, yes. Got it. But he was alluding to. But he doesn't like okay. the fact that somebody might have said, you know what, it's not really a ruptured Achilles. 
But, I mean, I said that yesterday. Right, but he's okay with questioning COVID. <laughs> I mean, you should talk to Bruce from Flushing. I, I think COVID got him and intubated him. Wait, but 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 this is a horrible argument, and we're not. Even, I'm not even going to go down the, the 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 rabbit hole of the of the vaccine. I don't want to scare anyone about the vaccine, but y you are doing something that scientifically no one has ever seen in history. In theory, that's what you're saying. Not only are you doing it. You're calling your shot. You're saying the greatest athletes in the world came come back in a year, somewhere between nine and 14 months. I'm coming back in three. And because people go, huh, is that humanly possible? That somehow has some impact on the vaccine conversation? I just... The leaps that he's making, like, I like oh. Rodgers. He seems like an interesting, fun dude to talk to. He argues like a 20-year-old who's been up on YouTube all night. These thoughts aren't that innovative, bruh. Everything you bring up, you're not, he, it, like, yo, I'm telling you, him and Kyrie should start a podcast, and the two of them, every week, they can have conversations, Don, like Chris Farley and Black Sheep, where they learn about a subject, and 20 minutes later, their head is exploding because they think no one's delved into it Man, before. But, 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 it's just not that deep, bro. Why would people not, now listen, I'm not really suggesting he didn't have a torn Achilles, but if he comes back in a quarter of the time as anyone else ever, will I go, was it all the way torn? Is that an unreasonable question to ask? But but but, but we're, we're talking about science. It's science, bro. So with the vaccine, he wanted to question in the, I don't know if this is something I want to do. Now, he's chosen this therapy that it's going to work. The open-mindedness to me kind of works both ways, where it's like, all right, well, listen, I, I'm open to it working, but hey, maybe it won't. Right. Like So we're looking at it. We're basing it on everybody that's ever done that. Hey, this is the timetable. I'm a little dubious that he's going to be able to come back. He's positive that he will be able to come back. We're just having an open discussion on whether it's going to work. I'm all happy that he's in on that therapy, for it. and I hope it works. But and if it does work, then you can hang on the rim and say that we were all wrong. But don't make it look like that we're closed-minded or ignorant to, to at least debate the fact that I'm a little curious on whether this is actually going to work out. I hope it does. And by the way, I don't want to mess up your argument, but in terms of having the conversation about your Achilles versus things like vaccines, I, as much as I want to see you play again, whatever you try to do to treat your Achilles will have no effect on whether or not I get a torn Achilles. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a different conversation, dude. I fully support you doing something that's going to be innovative for you. It's, it's just such a, it's you're trying, yo, like I said, he can't let go of that subject. He's just very into but, that and fight. And, and, he wants and, to have that fight. I mean, here's the thing. It doesn't make him any better or worse than anybody, than Kirk Cousins, who decided not to do that and then just be done for the rest of the season. Now, obviously, their careers are in different situation, but, you know, Cousins is a free agent. I'm sure he wanted to try to come back, especially now that his team has turned it around. Like, so, all right, good for you. You're trying something. Other people might want to try something else. There's nothing. Questioning doesn't, hey, but, I mean, hey, blind support are two different things. Things. Hey, dude, listen, I was just thinking, though, bro, listen, everyone listen for a second. Hear me out, all right? Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers, did either one of them get the vaccine? No. Did they both get a torn Achilles? Yes. Eh? Just saying, bro, open-minded. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, just to put a ball on this, because yeah. this whole science thing has gotten us into trouble before. Oh, yeah. Hate science. So... You question science constantly, but I think Dr. Neil Elitrach, he, he kind of went to medical school. He, he applies science in all of his things, so that science is okay. The other science is weird science, so I guess you choose. You, you, choose you, what, you pick your battles. Yeah. You, you choose what, what, what hill you want to die on. Let's go to Rich in Forest Hills. Big Rich. What's up, Richie? Hey, guys. How, hey, guys. How's it going? Great. You? Good, good. Uh, I'm sure I'm being a little optimistic or glass half full here, but you mentioned a few minutes ago how Hackett has not tailored the offense to Zach whatsoever. Um, big picture, I'm thinking maybe does it benefit not to tailor it so that, you know, Wilson, Garrett Wilson and uh, Hall get more reps in the style of offense that Aaron would come back and play. Uh, I don't know if they're smart enough to think that way, but it might be just an ancillary benefit along the way. I was wondering what you thought well, about that. Uh, if, if that is, in fact, the case, it's, it's, it's moronic because you got to win these games. Otherwise, when he comes back and those guys are in 
Aaron Rodgers' offense, they're going to be what four and ten, and where, where are you going to be? So it doesn't make sense. You have to you have to pivot and you have to you know recalibrate on the fly. He went down after four plays. I'm not saying they do it in that game. It's hard to do it in that game. I'm not saying they do it in the second game. But we're you know we're week ten already. You, you got to put some things in that Zach feels comfortable with. And what what Aaron Rodgers just said makes no sense to me. Well, you know I I, I want two MVPs in this offense. Really, really. Well, Nolan Ryan won 300 games, through, you know, throwing essentially hmm. fastballs. What if Sonny Gray just threw fastballs like that? It wouldn't work. There's different but, talents. But, but Michael, the, both both the Raiders and the Bills replaced their offensive coordinator in the middle of the season. The Raiders won two games with a different OC. Buffalo's trying to save their season with a different one. So you can indeed make changes in the middle of the season. It's not impossible. The players will adjust. I know it's hard. But, you know, if you're coming back and playing the exact same system, then why did you change OCs? So you can make changes. They've had a buy to be able to make changes. They've had 10 days off to be able to make changes. There's been a lot of different things that could, they could have done they chose not to do. I think it's just cover for the fact that he hasn't played well. All right, let's uh, turn to Peter now. He's going to tell us about FanDuel. We continue to take your phone calls at 1-800-919-3776. Peter? Your dinner party was a hit. Your dishwasher took a hit. Your teen is giving laundry a try. Your dryer left you hung out to dry. Date night with the crush. Ah, your toilet won't flush. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Visit ahs.com and get a free quote today. No one has hair like you because no one else has the same hair type, diet, stress level, same life. Pros creates radically custom hair care made for you alone. Created by our expert chemists using effective natural ingredients and then made to order. Our easy online consultation synthesizes 85 different factors to design customized products tailored to your needs. Because Pros products are made just for you. Take our free consultation today at, at pros.com slash TV. I'm Jesse Dover, co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Land and Carry All, a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry, after all, this city is a reflection of who I am, purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. The most important tool on any job site in America is the one you wear on your feet for 40 hours a week. Wait, what? My name is Eric Gerard. I started Brunt Workwear in my garage for my buddies in the trades. The modern construction worker has different needs than they did 100 years ago. That's why at Brunt, our gear is designed by workers for workers with premium technologies like triple layer comfort, slip and oil resistant soles, and a triple layer waterproofing system. Go online for free shipping and try any of our gear on, on the job for 30 days risk free. Box, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. Get a 10 to 14 pound turkey free in your first box. Sign up for Her Butcher Box today. See that? Yep. Looks like rain. Also looks like McDelivery. Order McDelivery in the app.
shopping showdown but it's a nissan sales event to add good thing my rogue has intelligent all-wheel drive so does my ultima now get a low 349 per month lease on rogue or get a low 289 per month lease on ultima better hurry these offers won't be back in stock there's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the hyundai you've always wanted Plus, America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $2.29 a month or get 0% APR for 60 months plus zero payments for 90 days. Now during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Chris Sheeran back here for the Michael K. Show. The Nets will once again be without Ben Simmons tonight as he misses his fourth straight game with a hip bruise. You would think that Spencer Dinwiddie's production would go up without Simmons and Cam Thomas in the lineup, but that line of thinking would work the opposite way as he tries to figure out his role in Brooklyn's injury-riddled opening to the season. In nine games so far, Dinwiddie's attempts per game are down nearly five shots. Tonight, Brooklyn plays the first home game on their in-season tournament schedule when they welcome in Paolo Bancaro and the Orlando Magic. Our coverage begins with an hour-long pregame live from Barclays Center immediately following the Michael K. Show at 6.30. And that will lead you up to opening tip a little after 7.30. It's the Nets and the Magic. Coverage starting at 6.30 tonight on Yes. And streaming, of course, on the Yes app. You know this, but Pantera is coming to Madison Square Garden on Thursday, February 22nd. Enter for a chance to win tickets at ESPNNewYork.com or on the ESPN New York app. Just scroll down to contest and submit your entry. Brought you by Live Nation. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. at Ticketmaster.com. Magic against the Nets tonight. So the pregame's at 6.30 on Yes. Also, that's an in-season tournament game. Yeah, because it's Tuesday. I, I, I got to tell you, it's getting no traction. Zero. No. And maybe it does when they get to Vegas. You know, that game might be fun, you know, playing for this fictional championship. But these games leading up to it, we just know that it went, God, it's on Friday and Tuesday. Tuesdays and Fridays, yeah, yes. I don't think there's any traction. I don't think there's any, there's no buzz about it. Yeah, it, it, it is. And again, the, the worst thing about it is that people are going to ignore, and it doesn't hurt. But I don't think they've seen a ratings boost at all. There's already been a problem with the court in Dallas. The fact that they even have to change the court to let you know that it's a tournament game, they're at least opening up the possibility that when people tune it in, they don't even know. And and it's going to be teams. If I think if the, the Knicks are playing, they're playing Friday against the Wizards. That's in that's a tournament game. And I think if they lose to the Wizards, I, they'll pretty much be done at zero and two. So the teams that are out of it aren't going to care. And, Michael, what do you do if it ends up being like a Boston or a Milwaukee or a Denver? The teams that are competing for a championship. The, the, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? What do you mean? I mean, well, uh, the, if you're, I would think that one of the, the intriguing things was it, it gives some of the smaller market teams, teams that don't have a chance at a championship, a carrot to go after during the season. But if it ends up being the teams that are going to compete for a championship, uh, well, it, it'll lose traction because that's not the that's not the carrot they're going nah, after. But I think the carrot they're going after is that players play these games. That they don't. Well, it's good that they're playing. They don't rest these games because there's a five hundred thousand dollar bonus at the end of it. But you're, you're you're selling an event that I don't know if you know people might watch just because they like the teams that are in it, but. Is, does it make sense if nobody's really talking about it? It's not creating a buzz, any traction at all? Now, I don't think you give up on a one-year. I think that right now when you hear Adam Silver talk about it, he's fully committed to this. But maybe you get a team that's got no chance of a championship making a run. There could be a little excitement. But you're a Celtic fan, Peter. Are you, you going to get excited that Celtics have a chance to win in, in tournament 
in season tournament no. what you when you've got a, a, an actual you know ring to try to chase after well no i mean so far I, I, as someone who supports the nba and wants their ideas to do well i do not care about this at all it, i mean and i'm not saying in a bad way like oh i can't believe it this is so stupid i'm just saying hasn't actually piqued my interest right. but i went to a game i went to i went to the net celtics game right no no, no it's, it's only tuesday friday yeah yes it's not for the whole weekend, just Tuesday, Friday. So I guess it wasn't part of so it. So you didn't even Again, you were there. Again, I didn't even realize. Like you were there. Like so, you still bought the ticket. You were still interested in the game, but not interested in the tournament. No, but it turns out it wasn't the tournament, right? Because it was right. Saturday. But night. the fact that you didn't know it spins everything. It, it, it well, the, the NBA is going to be in it until like you know they're, they're taking bids on TV deals and all the big networks. So no, we're good. But by the way, and over time, maybe it gains a little more meaning and traction. Right. But right now, no. I mean, there's so many interesting things going on with this league that you don't really need it. I, I get why they're trying but, it, but there's a lot of storylines. But, right but, but I, uh, to Michael's point, maybe if there's an, maybe if you go to a Celtic game that's a tournament game, there's better chance that they're, they're, they will have their true starting five in that game, where without the tournament, maybe you would have went to the game, and that's the game Tatum's not playing. Right. Or Brown's not playing. You know, so I guess there's... By the way, I didn't tell you guys, so... so because because the, the Nets have a world class organization mm -hmm. and treat me like a, a, a gentleman, a, a king, yeah. They they gave me fantastic seats to the Nets Celtics game and a couple weeks ago. Your connection left the Nets, so you got another connection, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I do. Who I've, who I've known almost as long as my old connection, mm -hmm. but um, I got to tell you, sitting incredibly close, and and Don, I don't know if you were able to take this in from just calling the Celtics Knicks the other day. Or you didn't? You didn't call yesterday, did you? You called the I first one. I didn't know. Oh, right. I didn't call either. I was at the first one. Charger? <laughs> I've, I've called four games, but none of them Neither were the, the two Celtics. Celtics. It was a, no, the Spurs game was cool. And I had Spurs, Hornets, Cavs, and Clippers. Are okay. The I Getting to watch Tatum as close as I did, Michael, it's... There's something about watching his game up close that you really go, oh, my God, this, this guy's one of the... He's a top five, six guy in this league. He, he is a... Don't get me wrong, I've always known Tatum's the man, but there's a level of ease that you're able to see that he plays with. The size that he has and sort of the smoothness of his game, he's a special kind of dude. Did it again last night. Sorry, Nick. Let's go to Greg in West Harrison. Greg. Hey, guys, how we doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. So, I think in order to make this in-season tournament more interesting, they, they should adapt what we do in, in Europe. So, like, we have the Premier League, Spain has La Liga, but then there's an in-season tournament as well where every team in the country gets to start in the tournament, like, in the early rounds. Right. And in the, late, in the later rounds, all, like, the top pro teams get, get put in. So you end up with, like, some semi-pro fourth division team playing against the big dogs like Manchester United or Liverpool, and it creates, like, a really cool story. But that's what they're and doing. That's exactly what they're no, doing. No, but he wants, like, uh, what do you want, the Harlem Globetrotters to play in it? I don't get what you're saying. Well, you want the G League yeah, like, to be involved? Um, yeah, yeah, so, like, have the uh, G League tournament, and then the top six or eight teams from the G League get the in-season tournament. They get to play against the, the NBA team. Well, but, but they kind of look at the lower-level teams of the NBA the same way they do with your uh, out-of-league out of stuff. So they're hoping that the Wizards are that team to make a run. Let's, let's be honest. I, I, again, I'm not a huge soccer guy, but I, I think there could be stories where a smaller market soccer team can play with Manchester United. A G League team would get pulverized by an NBA team. By the team. worst NBA team. Pulverized. Because the right. teams that are in the lower leagues in, in, in Europe, they were relegated there. So at one point, they could actually rise up. Right. But a G League team would get destroyed. But there's some sports, Michael. Like, like On a given day, the Somerset Patriots might be able to beat the Yankees. True. On a given day. But in, in, in high-scoring sports like football and basketball, like hockey, there could be an AHL team that could beat an NHL team or a college team on one given day. But in basketball and the NFL, no shot. Zero. A G League team would not be able to compete. Let's go. Maybe for a little while, but eventually they would just get thumped. Let's go to Mark and Rockland. Mark. Hello, Mark. Michael and Don, my guys, huge fan, first-time caller. Not a Peter guy? Listener. You don't like Peter? Uh, Michael, I got a question. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Peter guy at all, but I no. won't get into that on the show. That's terrible. Um, 
<laughs> Michael, real quick, two-part question about Stanton. Uh, do you think this is Cashman's way of trying to kind of push him out the door? And two, do you think it's going to hurt? Oh, that's a shame. That was weird. It cut off there at the oh, end. Oh, well, good for you, Peter. Oh, no, you didn't get your second point, bozo. Oh, wow. So, no, it shouldn't go unmarked. That that, he I mean, dis you disregard one of our guys and get no, to make because a point? I, because I'm not a guy and I don't want to bring it up because it has nothing to do with anything that's ever talked about on the show. But I'm glad that Peter did it. That was me. Stand up for yourself. Um, we discussed what? this earlier, Mark. <laughs> uh, I believe... We, we, we try to we try to figure out what Brian's doing, and one of the things that you know we said could be, you know, the end game is maybe he wants to tick off Stanton that he waves no trade, or maybe Brian was just telling the truth, which he was. Well, let, let's. I mean, Stan's a good guy, so I don't think this would happen. But how would you react if you're Brian Cashman if you went to Stan and said, "Listen, it's not working out here. You're always hurt. It's not your fault, but you're making a lot of money." We're trying to move into a different direction. There's a few teams that are interested in you. We need you to waive your, wave your no-trade clause. Will you do it? And Stan's like, get lost, buddy. I'm not waving it. I negotiated it. How dare you even ask? And that infuriates Brian to the point where he goes public and says what he said. Yeah, but you're still shooting yourself in your foot, aren't you? I understand, but we, we, we know that Brian has a bit of a trigger, right? He does, and you tried to get him to waive his no-trade clause. You tried to act like a gentleman. He said no. You, you still need him to do it. So could it be just, hey, you're angry, but also end game. if I get him so ticked off that he decides to waive it because he's mad at me, then I win. Yeah, but, uh, hey, I'm not saying it, it can't be the truth, but you're not going to win that game with Stan. Stan's a different bird. Well, um, all right, but it happened, so why? You know, yeah, we're trying to find why. out why. Now, now, let's just try to resolve what just happened here. So now the new sure. rule here is if somebody doesn't like any of the three of us, they're not talking to them, that doesn't make sense. Now, if I was a caller, you don't have to say, hey, Michael and Don, I love you if you hate Peter's guts. Just ask your question rather than alienating somebody on the well, show. Well, but hanging up on him doesn't work either. I don't think that's mm -hmm. smart. Well, why? Why? No, because question. there's a lot of people that he call up and don't like out. me or don't like well, Don. Yeah, that means we don't take their question. Everybody has to love all three of us. That's well, a stupid move. No, no. All you have to do, all you have to do, is acknowledge all three. No, no. no I just thing. said the best play for the guy was just ask your question. Don't say I love you, Don. I love you, Michael. And uh, obviously, very blatantly leave out Peter. And then Don asked about Peter. He didn't say he hated your guts for any specific reason. He said there's another story. Man, Peter hung up. But, but that's not right. I don't get the problem. What do you mean well, you don't have not, a problem? It, well, well, because, well, listen, I understand there's a little nuance because I asked him. But he specifically was trying to make the point, hi, Don, hi, Michael, not liking Peter. Peter's our guy. You don't like Peter, we don't like you. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I, and, and by the way, if I'd cut him off immediately, I think I was actually very reasonable. I thought for a second. <laughs> he asked a question. Then he went into question two. I said, that's enough. You don't get two. But I, I, get, I don't you understand one. your thinking. There's a lot of people that call that don't like one of the three of us. Are we not taking but, calls that way anymore? So somebody has to do a census. Anthony, when, from no, now no, on, no, when no, anybody don't, calls, just, don't, just make sure that, that all three of us, minute. they like all three of us. Wait That's a minute. A, this, this is a bad wait argument. Wait a minute. No, it's asinine what you did. No, wait a minute. When has anybody ever called and said, hi, Peter, hi, Michael, and specifically left me out or left you out? Not a thing. Even if they don't like us, they'll still acknowledge us. It's only a thing when they completely ignore Peter. That's well, a, I said a, there were two right. things. I said if the guy wanted to ask his question, just don't do the I love you, Michael and Don, and then leave out Peter. But he did, but he, but he did do uh, that. I, so I why get would, it, but so now we're, we're, we're taking attendance on who likes whom. No, no. No, no need for attendance. He volunteered the information. So when, uh, okay, so let, let's let's get the ground rule. So if somebody doesn't like one of us, they're not going to be able to ask a question. If they feel the need to belittle any of us, I think anyone oh, should yeah. have the right to hang up on that person. That's that's I, that, isn't that a fair argument? Well, but, but I would just like to know how would you f felt if he just said, "Hey, Peter. Hey, Don," and then you said, "What about me?" He's like, "Well, I don't like oh, you." I would not. Have, I guarantee you, I would not have hung up. But, on but, him. Yeah, Why but, not? but you. But also, it's all theoretical to you because it's happened hundreds of times to me. It's never happened to you. I'll let that silence serve. <laughs> well, but no, no that, it's not even applicable to your argument. It, it, it don't. No, it is. But it I'm is. I'm just telling you, if show... it did happen to me, I would not have hung up on the but guy. You, but but again, I think it's it was such rude. A it's such a re theory. You think that's rude? This is, this is like a part of, a, of society I don't understand. This is like in the NBA. I, I got caught with, no, it's like the NHL, Don, a retaliation penalty. I, yeah, fine. You can see it that way if you want, but I was just slashed. 
So yeah, you want to give me the the the, the five minute major? That's fine. But all I was doing was slapping. He did back. not say I don't like you, Peter, because I think you're a d bag. He just said hi, Michael. Hi, Don. And then Don said Don kind of instigated it. No, Peter. And they said, well. I don't like Peter, but that's another story for another day. He didn't say but, anything terrible about you. He doesn't like but, you. But he did willfully and intentionally yeah. leave me out. Did he have to do that? He, did, he didn't. He, why? Hey, guys, here's he, my question. He I said, said that, that that would be the way to play it. But, but okay, so once we established that was the thing to do it, I need to sit here and eat his insult? Why? His phone calls put money in my pocket? Every phone call puts money in our no, pockets. No, it doesn't. No, entertaining questions and entertaining conversation adds to our show, which does well for everyone. Calling up and being a jerk yeah. in a subtle way does nothing for me. And to defend myself, when you when you go out of your way to say hi Don, hi Michael, and not you you're begging the question to be asked so he could say, I don't like Peter. Why? Yeah, I don't expect everybody to like us, but you like the show, you call into the show, ask your question. Oh, you got to get in. You get got to get the little dig. I don't like Peter. Well, I don't like you. Goodbye. I, I, I'm, I'm not backing off of that. <laughs> I'm, I, I, listen, I, I won't make a habit of it. He, listen, that was that was legitimately, Don, you would say what? Over the years, the hundredth time something like yeah, that's happened? It, it, well, it, it happened. I've never, I've never actually pulled the trigger on that. Today, when he got to the second question after belittling me, I said, eh. Enough enough. But did he belittle you? He never said specifically what he but doesn't you, like but about you're, you. But you're, you're giving benefit of the doubt to someone who clearly didn't deserve it. He intentionally didn't say my name. Then when Don brought it up, not me, when Don brought it up, he then specified not liking well, me. Well, my point to the, you, the, the caller, I already forget his name, when you either say, hi, my, hi guys. I wish everybody would do that rather than do roll call. Hi guys, and we eliminate this nonsense. But he didn't. But he. But there was a re. But, but there was he, a reason he doesn't like you. So my, my right. point is. So now you have to like all three of us to get your call in. No, you just have to not specifically insult one person. Hey, Peter, why aren't you talking about better help? You could use it. Oh my God, you could use it. When it comes to these arguments, sometimes I, I don't know what's going on. Maybe, maybe someone could benefit from having some conversations. Like me personally. I do therapy. It helps me work through these things so I can have reasonable discussions and end up in a place that I feel happy with the result. For example, what just happened today... Your dinner party was a hit. Your dishwasher took a hit. Your teen is giving laundry a try. Your dryer left you hung out to dry. Date night with the crush. Ah, your toilet won't flush. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Visit ahs.com and get a free quote today. These jeans are a woman size 34. That was a wake-up call for me. I'm 42, but my body felt like it was 90 years old. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found, and I'm just getting started. And because of Found, I have more confidence in myself. I'm actually in photos with my family. I'm getting my steps in each day. Found has changed my life. Go to joinfound.com just to see if the program's right for you. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dime Me Dover is a bag brand based in New York City, founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> it's pronounced D Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. See everything your store can do with tools from Square. Your inventory automatically restocks, so you never run low. Your online store stays open 24-7, so you're always ready to sell. Your payments are processed in seconds, so customers can breeze through checkout. And with one account to manage it all, you got more time for taking time out. Get your all-in-one retail system by signing up at squared.com today.
No one has hair like you because no one else has the same hair type, diet, stress level, same life. Pros creates radically custom hair care made for you alone. Created by our expert chemists using effective, natural ingredients and then made to order. Our easy online consultation synthesizes 85 different factors to design customized products tailored to your needs. Because Pros products are made just for you. Take our free consultation today at, at pros.com slash TV. If you have health problems, you may think life insurance is hard to get. Colonial Pen has an easy solution. Guaranteed acceptance. Whole life insurance. It's easy because you don't need a medical exam and there are no health questions. Visit colonialpen.com for more information and a free gift. Does it still count as ending the night with McDonald's? If you order it for breakfast the morning after... I'm ordering either way. Order McDelivery in the app. This may look like a holiday shopping showdown, but it's a Nissan sales event to add. Good thing my road has intelligent all-wheel drive. So does my Altima. Now get a low $349 per month lease on Rogue or get a low $289 per month lease on Altima. Better hurry. These offers won't be back in stock. Ten years ago, we started on Tuck It Out of My Apartment, and today we have more than 80 stores worldwide. It's been quite a journey. We didn't just create shirts designed to be worn untucked. We perfected them with great fabrics and design at the perfect untucked length. So you can look sharp in this new business comfortable world. Just look for our signature sale. Untuck it, 10 years in the making and we're nowhere close to stopping. Find the perfect holiday gift at untuckit.com today. New York Presbyterian is the largest transplant program in the nation, giving more people a chance to make more memories. We've performed over 18,000 transplants and counting. With the largest living donor program in the country, more people have a better chance to find an organ match that can save their life. And we have the most diverse transplant recipients in the nation. That means more people have a chance to live longer and stay amazing. You look like a responsible family guy. <laughs> you looking for something with a little more space? Since it's the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, I just seen your signature right here. Oh, you do have a driver's license, right? I have mine. Perfect timing. <laughs> With the click of a pen, you can get a new Volkswagen at the Sign Then Drive event. Hurry in to lease a new 2024 Tiguan for zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero due at signing. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Yes. Sheeran back here for the Michael K show. The Buffalo Bills have now lost three of their last four and four of their last six games. After a solid three and one start to the season, they dropped to 500 with their loss in Denver last night. Josh Allen threw for only 177 yards and two interceptions. 10 of his 11 picks this season have come on throws of 10 plus air yards. Allen threw 14 total interceptions last season. He's just three away from that total with seven games left. Four of those seven games are against current playoff teams. After a meeting with the Jets, it's three straight teams that are battling for playoff position in the Eagles, Chiefs, and Cowboys. The Chargers may be playing for something around Christmas, and the game with the Dolphins could decide the AFC East. Buffalo has already taken the first game between the division rivals. Randy in Columbus. Randy. Good. How you doing, Rand? Good. And I, I will say I like all three of you guys. So. Oh, thank you. Know, uh, thank don't you. Worry about no, no need. Off, but... No need, Randy, but appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm wondering if you guys think that this past year might be one of the most disappointing New York sports years ever. And yep. I'm really talking in terms of 
all the teams that had high expectations and just like completely fell flat on their face. So, for example, with baseball, coming into this year, you had the 101 win Met team and a 99 win Yankee team, both expecting to do big things, um, but they both ended up having awful seasons. In football, you had maybe the highest expectations ever for a Jets team. And a Giants team coming off a, uh, a hoping to build off a successful playoff season the year before, the Jets are obviously trying to stay afloat uh, in their season while the Giants are, are crashing and burning. And, and in the NBA, you had the Nets with their star-studded team that can just completely fell apart. All those stars got traded, and, and the team got completely dismantled over the past year. So I don't know hockey that well, so I can't speak to that. But of the three big sports, you know, I'd say five of the six teams had huge expectations this past year, and they just completely bombed, the one exception being the Knicks. So I'm wondering if you guys could think of any seasons from years past that uh, might compare uh, where so many New York teams had a lot of hype and excitement and just didn't come close to meeting expectations. Well, I mean, this is not a golden era in New York sports, I'll tell you that. No. I, I can't think of a, a, another year. This is, you know, maybe recency bias. There have been disappointments, but... For every single team that you just mentioned, the Giants coming off a playoff, the Jets with Rodgers, the Yankees, 99 wins, the Mets 101, and they all just went in the toilet. It's, it's kind of hard to think of another year like that. Well, there have been years where no one made the playoffs, but I think what makes this one special is that the four teams in baseball and football, all four had high expectations going into the respective seasons and all blanked the bet, right? right? So... And to have the baseball season go the way that it went. And you're like, all right, well, you know what? We're good. We got football. And both of those two teams disappoint. Now, the Jets haven't disappointed yet, but they seem like they're on their way. And it's still not the season you expected because you lost Aaron Rodgers. I, I don't remember, like, the back-to-back -back sports seasons being this disappointing, this hyped, and to walk away possibly with nothing. Do you remember when we said at the start of the football season, can you imagine if it happens again? I think we had a conversation like, oh, my God, the baseball oh. season went so badly. Thank God we have football. Can you imagine if somehow we end up in the same place? And I, I could argue the Giants season is the worst so far. It's worse than the Mets. Not worse I mean, than the Jets, though. The Jets had Super Bowl aspirations. Yeah, but the Jets are still a lot. We're still talking about them. They're four and five. Yes, it stinks that they cannot play football and they lost their star due to injury. But I could argue that the Giants coming off a playoff season, even though they don't have the, the, the obviously the payroll that the Mets have or anything like that, you can't say that. But to be this bad, where they're a and, ten point dog at a team with a losing yeah, record next week. You're right. The expectations, well, they're probably similar. I don't think anybody had the Giants winning a Super Bowl, but they thought, all right, maybe maybe they'll be able to go back to the playoffs, maybe maybe win another playoff game. But now they're going to they might win. They might go 2 and 15. And think about it. It's going into September 10th. The Yankees were still well, they, they they were still mathematically alive. But it was you know they weren't making the playoffs and the Gi and the Mets were already dead. Yes. And then the Giants lose 40 to nothing, and the next day, Aaron Rodgers gets hurt. And it, it was like immediate. And you couldn't even, <laughs> not even a moment of hope it to get crazy. to have for a second. And, you know, listen, obviously we have competitive competitive hockey teams and a, 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 really, basketball a, promising, a promising Knicks season and, and a Nets team that that's actually has some pieces that are fun and could play hard. But, I mean, for the two major sports, Michael, it's just brutal. Yeah, it's, it's not what you want. As Joe Girardi would say, it's been pretty bad. ENN is coming up in just a moment, so stay tuned for that. When I'm getting ready for game, I have to be... Life insurance with our family history. Don't you know about Colonial Pen? Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. We guarantee acceptance to everyone age 50 to 85. No health questions. No medical exam. Visit colonialpen.com for free information and a free gift. I'm Jesse Dover, co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Landon Carryall. 
a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry. After all, this city is a reflection of who I am, purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. For far too long, millions of Americans have been strapping on uncomfortable work boots pushed by out-of-touch corporate types. Hey! Whoa. To design boots and apparel that hardworking men and women actually want, you have to get on the job site and listen. And that's why Brunt names gear after guys like us. Apart from making our boots and apparel innovative, reliable, and insanely comfortable, we back all of our gear with a 30-day on-the-job risk-free trial. You deserve better, you deserve Brunt. Try any of Brunt's gear on the job for 30 days risk-free. My oily hair was just controlling my life. I've always had a sensitive scalp and dry hair. My frizz was still out to here. And the pros quiz told me that hard water and air pollution are making my problems a lot worse. The pros sent me my custom formula with clean ingredients specifically made for me. Now my hair is healthy. My scalp is finally happy. And it's completely transformed my hair. We just signed the lease on our third shop. I guess we're a chain now, right? We've worked so hard to get here. My assistant went to customink.com to get our new uniforms and merch with all the location names. Our custom gear helps him get our brand out into the community. He takes care of all of our custom ink orders. He was able to find great products, upload the new art, and have boxes sent directly to each of the shops. Custom ink makes it so easy. Get started today at customink.com. Does it still count as ending the night with McDonald's? If you order it for breakfast the morning after? I'm ordering either way. Order McDelivery in the app. The Brooklyn way is something that you can't describe. You just got to know it. You got to feel it. You got to be here. We give everyone the swag, the lingo, the culture, the look. We're just the sauce. We got everything. Everything you want, we got. To see somebody going after something and doing like what they love, it's easy to show love. And that's one thing about Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? It's a reflection of who we are. Be right there. Wait. Use the shovel and bucket of water, remember? Drown, stir, drown, feel. Then make sure it's cool. Where'd you learn that? Smokeybear.com. Brushed up on some tips before we left. Don't want to start a wildfire, right? <laughs> Only you can prevent wildfires. It's brought to you, yeah, sure. It's brought to you tonight by Security Dodge. Go see Michelle Scalise and... Let's start off by saying good evening to Michael. He better not be touching any of my candy. <laughs> and to Don. I'm just the update guy. And to Don. Our back. Get it? <laughs> See? Makes you laugh. You don't know why, but it makes you laugh. Michael, he played that for us during a break. It was... It was I, I only heard the first minute, yeah, but I was staring into space. Not well, he played you the, the dice, the, the actual. Yeah, well, but he, he played the first minute. You got to you gotta listen to the whole Full thing. five minutes. And I, Jacobs, uh, Jacobs was really showing a, you know, his cubes by just stopping. Yeah, he's, he had enough. I, I, by the way, well, he probably was thinking, I got to do commercials here. What no, are we going to do, finish I think this? he was making a statement. I, and, I agree and I get with the it, statement. but part of the reason it's funny is that it's not funny for the first minute, then it becomes funny. But I get it. We're, we're very oh, got impatient. It, got it, got it. We're a very impatient group. I'll call you back in an hour. Hour? Back? Get it? Yeah, no, no, I don't get it. And good evening to Michael and myself. I'm going to start off a little Yankees. Great. <laughs> hey.
Have you ever heard Don's laugh perfectly fade like that? I've never, never heard that. The volume perfectly decreased. Ten, nine, eight, seven. I'm going to start off a little Yankees. Great. Yeah, we're going to have a rough winter. Well, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to start sucking it up here because the Jets are not going to make it possible here. They're just not. So. Um, now, speaking of the Jets, Garrett Wilson. I don't know if you guys know he has a spot with Barton Hahn every week. Yes. And they zoom that too. Oh yeah, they do because he's a professional. Um, he explained his quote about being quote tired. It's not about me. Um, first of all, that made it sound like it was about me, and I just meant more of I'm tired of us as a team not playing. You know the way that we should be. Us as an offense. I mean, let me correct that. Playing the way we we should be. And um, yeah, I just took to Twitter because I because I just you know I don't I don't want that to go around. You know, obviously I love this this fan base, this team, and you know everything that comes with being a New York Jet. And you know if there's something that that I see is out that may uh, give someone a different idea than that, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm correcting it. So that's all that was. Oh, I get it. So I get I, so we certainly get it. We're all tired. Um, how about the uh, self-inflicted wounds there on mm. offense, G-Dubs? They're talking about pre-snap penalties, um, whether it's lining up wrong, a procedural or false start, offside whatever it may be, and uh, just shooting yourself in the foot, you know, not even giving yourself a chance um, in this league. Every yard is precious. It's truly a, a game of inches, and, and I, you know, that that's kind of just a little saying I threw to the side until you get to the league and you really realize, you know, this, this really is a game of inches. And when you're doing stuff like that, you know, your, your chances of, of winning drop exponentially. You know, we, we put the ball on the ground too much the last two weeks. We turned the ball over. <laughs> So, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons why we're not, um, you know, playing the way we want to on offense. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of things, you know, end up leading to uh, self-inflicted wounds, you know, things that, that we got to fix during the practice week. Well, I'll tell you what, they they took one step. They they released Michael Carter, who had a really good season a couple of years ago. It was, it that was, was a, a high draft pick. And what was it, second or third round? And they just cut him because he did a cut block that uh, that was a big penalty. He didn't play the rest of the game, and now we'll never play again. And they didn't have to release him. They could have just made him inactive the rest of the year, but they released him. So that was them trying to send a message mm -hmm. that they're done with the. But you know, are they going to are they going to do anything to Osama? Are they going to do anything to uh, to uh, Lazard? They, they made no. huge errors too. So it's always easy. Let's cut the guy on the lowest part of the totem pole when he well, makes a mistake. Sort of what I was thinking. All, all due respect, I, is is it's it sort of seems like a sacrificial lamb. That's exactly what it is. It's it's. Uh, we're going to prove a point with a guy that's not that important. Yeah, like because he's not the only person making bad decisions here. Yeah, it seems like they zeroed in on that one thing. By the way, can you, uh, I'm, I'm going to change subject for a second. Do, do, do you um? Can we spend a moment on a couple of the moments that Russell Wilson had last night? Isn't football crazy? You can go from thinking that someone's completely done. To he, he had that ridiculous touchdown pass, right? But you know what play I love from Russell Wilson? That what ended up being essentially the game-winning play, the, the, the third down blitz that he just chucked up in the air a mm -hmm. mile high, knowing that the receiver coming back to get it would probably draw a penalty. That was just smart football by Russell Wilson. I mean, he's not the guy he used to be, but he had, he had glimmers again last night. And God, was that a poor game by the by the Bills in every single facet. Just the turnovers. The turnovers were brutal. They could not keep the ball in their hands. Don, at the end of the game, you have you get you finally get the the, the sack they needed to really knock them out of field goal range and maybe end the game. The next play, they get the pass interference. Then the football gods give you a missed field goal, and you have twelve men on the field. That would be a game that if you're a fan at a, a, a Monday night game, cold annoying you have work the mm. next day everything about it is challenging and the team just completely hands it away so they fired yet, ken dorsey their offensive yep. coordinator and they, they named joe brady the interim and i believe that brady is the genius behind um uh, joe burrow the brady, when burrow the brady was at lsu brady. right mm. he's gonna have to do they, some work with uh with josh allen he's not the same quarterback well, they have not been the same, quite the same offense, even though we know that um, the year after Dable, 
Josh Allen still had a great statistical season. They have not offensively been as good as they were with Dable, though Dable hasn't been what you'd call fantastic this year as well. Um, moving on, you guys want some sleep? You want some sleepy Tom Bobos? <laughs> sure, why not? All right, as you know, the Knicks lost to the Celtics. Let's hear what sleepy Tom Bobos has to say. Just closing out the quarters. We didn't close out any quarters as well as we should have or could have. That was probably the biggest thing. I think we were up eight. Questionable, questionable, questionable for today for life? No, no, questionable for tomorrow. No, well, today, think... questionable for manana against the tournament in Washington. Oh, throw out the record books. What does the Wizards court look like, Peter? I don't know. I don't know what color they're making that. Um, what will be my guess? Blue? Yeah, blue. I think it's going to be blue. I'm sure I can find it. Don, are you going to be doing any road uh, vehicles or no? Not all, right all now. No, none schedule. I can't think I'm just uh, I'm a homer. Adam Silver. Where is this Adam Silver cut from, uh, Anthony? April. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, where? Where, I said, not when. I think it was a oh. Boston broadcast. I think. This is, all right, here's Adam Silver um, with some thoughts on how his league is covered by the media. We can all do a better job, and again, I'm not just pointing to the media here, is talking more about the game. And I also, my frustration a bit, I think sometimes that the color commentary in our games gets reduced to this team wanted it more, or, you know, this team tried harder, as opposed to, like, there's really complex defenses. Like, what's the offense? Like, why is this team losing the way they are? Like, why is this wow. team successful? Explain what the pick and roll is. Explain, you know, you know it's... It's funny, as our friend Chris Paul is always saying, you know, what does ice mean? What does blue mean? Like, explain what's happening on the court. Because I think there is this sense that, unlike in football, where the coaches are view viewed as these field generals going out there with the complex schemes, then in basketball, there's a sense that it's just about athleticism, you know, or, you know, somehow the coach's job is just to get the guys to play hard, as opposed to these incredibly sophisticated defenses, offenses. Well, I think you use another ooh. network example. I I think Kenny Smith, when he goes to that board, is a great example of helping explain the game visually, graphically to people to understand what's happening on the floor. Well, Sylvie, your, your problem is with your players. They're the ones who say uh -huh. they wanted it more. Um, uh, they, the, even coaches say, well, they, they play it harder. Not the media. We're quoting them. Mm. Tell your players. Guys, my conspiracy theory. Go ahead. When they, when, when we as a company did not bring back Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, mm. my conspiracy theory was that it was motivated by the league. I've never been more sure of that in my life after that cut. Why? He's they critiquing the color commentary of the broadcasts in the NBA, and two of the best at it were not brought back, and we still don't know why. That's in, that's ooh, so he's God. listening. He's Careful, paying attention Don. to what's being said. Careful, Don. I'm just being, I, I, honestly, I, he's the commissioner. I'm just saying. The, 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 the amount of money that exchanges hands, I'm, I'm sure all of these leagues have eyeballs and hands and ears on all of these broadcasts. But for him to be able to critique that the, the color commentators are not doing their job by really educating the listeners and the viewers on the game, that tells me he is very opinionated on it. And didn't we think that those were two of the best? And they were very opinionated. And I thought they broke down the game very well. I think but he meant all media, though. I was just talking about color commentators. Well, but that's he who usually Kenny breaks Smith. down the game. Well, he brought up Kenny as one that he likes because Kenny does what he's supposed well, to do. But do you guys agree it's about players basketball. that are always saying they wanted it, they but, played harder than us, they wanted it more than we did, rather than saying we stink, we didn't play well today. It's always about effort. So tell your players to change but, their narrative. But also, you know, we're told this, too. I mean, at least I was told this by program directors in the past. Like, Don, when you talk hockey, you get way too inside the numbers. you gotta, you got to be able to dumb it down for the listeners. You're, you're talking over everybody's head. I think that that's sometimes how broadcasts go in the NBA. Is like you got – there's a lot of young fans that maybe want to understand the game, but if you start really breaking it down into coach speak, that maybe a lot of viewers might not understand the game. So is it that they're, that they're not doing their job, or are they trying to explain it in a way that people that aren't basketball savants can understand it? Also, can I tell you what, from an entertainment standpoint, boy, is that the most overrated concept. I guess he's saying that he wants it to be sort of like the NFL is when you hear a Dan Orlovsky or a, you know, a, um, a Ryan Clark. And I love these guys. They do great work. 
But I'm, I don't know how you guys feel. The one time I check out on my sports analysis is when they start talking about it the way it's talked about in the locker room. Like they're specifically using language that you know keeps out the fan and is just for people who played the game. I, I don't need more of that in my NBA breakdowns. Frankly, I, I think the NBA is a lot easier to understand than football when it comes to actual gameplay. And it doesn't really require that. Yeah, it's not that difficult, Sylvie. I mean, they, yeah, they, they I, I, shoot 53s a game. Yeah. We, we know what's going on here. So I love the Sylvie. Sylvie's new. I like it. Sylvie's Michael's new. broken out the Sylvie. Remember, November 14th. I like it. I don't want him referred to anything other than that. As, well, if he was baseball, he'd be Sylvie. Well, he's, he's basketball, he's Sylvie. <laughs> well, I'm saying, but it's his Yankee name. No, this would have happened a long day. Yeah, if he was, yeah, if he was, he would have only been Sylvie. Yeah, if he, if he played for the Yankees, he or, or anybody on baseball. But you know, Garrett be Cole's never been Coley ever. Well, there's a reason for that. It doesn't. Well, work. What's the reason? It's, it's Coley. Suggests. Coley's horrible. Well, <laughs> it's just an exam. It, it, you know, Coley. Yeah. What do you mean? He's thinking Coley Oscar. Oh, Coley Oscar. Yeah, but nobody like calls it a Coley. No, you never but, heard but that. You got a Coley this When week? you said Coley, I just was like, I don't. I wouldn't want to be called that. Well, there's a lot of guys that probably wouldn't want to be called their their Y name. Well, speaking of being called out of their name, Chris wants to defend me and says that Michael's a fraud. Oh, wait, oh, really? We're taking yeah. calls in the United. Uh, to me, it feels like on, guys? it's a pressing <laughs> subject. Chris, what do you got? <laughs> so, first of all, that guy is a coward and took the easy way out. He could have actually said it with his chest and said why he doesn't like you. Instead, mm. he just made his little passive-aggressive comment. Second of all, he calls into your show, says to your friend that he doesn't like him, and you defend him and not your friend, Michael, you're a fraud friend. You should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, I've got an answer wow. for you, Chris, if you'd like to listen. Mm. Strong, Chris. You ready? He's there. I didn't yeah. hang up if, if it happened in a bar, I would not. I would disengage with the guy and walk away. This is a radio show. We cannot afford to just turn away listeners because Peter's feelings got hurt. Sorry, uh, my, my responsibility is to the show. Oh I'm, I'm Peter's God, friend no. off it's the air. It's good entertainment for you to stick up for your friend. Well, you know what? You I, thought it was enter I thought it was entertainment for me way. to rip my friend. Yeah, yeah, everything that, is entertainment. Still, but that still supports you being a fraud. You thought it was entertaining for you to be a fraud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm He's not saying being a fraud. It I, for I, you to be a good I, friend. I didn't, I'd be a fraud if I, if I made that up to just argue. I thought it was reprehensible that we hung up on a caller for that reason. Reprehensible? Yeah. The, the, the Michael, that, Michael, you berate oh people God. over their Yankee takes. Berate them. But I don't just hang up in the middle Michael, of... Michael, this is one of the worst things you've ever done. But yeah, it's a big friend. You know what? Real in the Bye words of the great Don McGregor, Chris, Don, I do it again. Peter, love you. Bye, guys. Bye, Chris. Bye, Chris. I, 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 I do it again. But you could be losing more people than, you know, gaining the guy you didn't hang listen, up on. Listen, listen. Well, let, let's just throw all the cards on the table. Most of the people that don't like Peter don't like Peter because of their perceived thoughts of what his perceived. political meaning, leanings are. That's it. That's their issue. That's their issue. Right. We cannot get into it with them. We can't. Fair enough. Because we're going to lose enough. them. You want to lose every but listener? Lost, but, but, but no, I didn't have an argument. To lose every listener would be to have an argument about these perceived political But there's political no way thoughts. that people would, like, look at you as a person, right? I was at a New York Athletic Club thing. So many people came up to me and liked me. Different people that you would never, oh, that person wouldn't like Peter. They like Peter. You would not look at Peter as a personality and not like him. So the only reason people don't like him is because of his perceived political leanings. That's right. it. That's the way the country is now. Are we going to hang up on every one of those people? No, because it, 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 no, because most people wouldn't feel the need to throw it in your face that they don't like you. What are you talking that's, about? That's those difference. people would specifically say it. They hate your guts for what they perceive to be your political leanings. That's it. No, but we didn't hang out up on him because of his political. No, but leanings. that's why that's why somebody wouldn't Peter like Peter. Peter. What they don't like him because he I, likes the commies. Well, that's back, back to my political <laughs> leanings. They like him because they probably think he is a commie. They yeah, dislike right. him, I mean, for that reason. But by, the, but by the way, it would have been just as entertaining for the sake of argument if you just decided, I'm going to be the friend of the year and rip but this I, guy But I wasn't looking to guy. entertain. I was actually saying what I thought. I think it's the wrong thing to hang up on somebody like that. For that reason. For, hold on. For the reason that it's alienating them as opposed to... So is the only... So I, this is an important philosophical question, then. If someone has a disagreement with you and expresses it through, in my opinion, disrespect. 
Is the only way on our side then to handle it for me to say thank you very much? No, no, I'll have first another. First of all, it wasn't disrespect. He did it in no, the most respectful way. He just doesn't no, like you. No, he didn't no, give no, you the see, reason why he didn't like you. No, but this is where we keep coming back. This is where the argument keeps cir circling around to. And this is where I believe our audience is going to firmly line up with where me and Don well, there were are. Two, not there were two are. callers that actually d defended me. You took the one that hung on that didn't that thought I was wrong. So let's I, not well, play I did, games. I didn't here. see the. I didn't see the other oh, people. Okay. I'm being totally honest. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. But. You're saying it wasn't disrespect that he went, hey, Michael, love you, Don, love you. Anyways, you're saying that's not disrespect. First of all, the it could have gone Don under the wire, but Don doubled down by but, saying, but you, no, you don't like Peter? But you know why Don said that? Because he doesn't because like he Peter. Heard the dis no, because he heard the disrespect. Yeah. Whatever. He, he purposely singled Peter out, but, but hoping that I would ask, and so he could say, well, I don't like Peter. You know what? I think it's time we talk about something else that's more important yeah, and, and, and sad. Besides Michael's poor friendship, which can come up, let's be honest, any day of the week. Um, you know what? <laughs> you, you are excused from the show when Larry David comes up in January. If you think I'm a poor oh. friend, you're out. That's not, that's not how it works. That's how it works. I don't think it's your, I don't think it's your call. Yeah, that's am I? I I'm 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 dismayed. By the way, Larry, La is going to go. Where, where's Peter? He's contractually obligated to be here. Yeah, I would. Time. I wouldn't. I, I have to skip He's the show. He's contractually obligated here? to be here. Really? Sometimes he. Well, <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. Um, right back to where we start. Now, oh, we have to get serious for a second. Yes. <clears throat> Giving it a gap, a pause. Mm. So a man has been arrested now in the manslaughter of Adam Johnson. You, you guys, of course, heard this story uh, a few weeks ago on the show. The former Penguin playing in a Champions Cup game in England, hockey that is, on October 28th, uh, was killed when a player's uh, blade of their skate uh, went to his throat, he ended up bleeding out and dying at the game. And now he has been arrested on suspicion of manslaughter. Don, we they didn't say who it is yet. That's what I'm confused about. Matt Pat Petgrave was the, the one that initiated the contact. It was his blade that cut the neck. So why isn't he arrested? Why is a man arrested? Well, but it says on the Yes Chiron right now that Pat, Matt Peckrave was arrested and charged. Oh, because but Peter just read it as the, the well. Story. It says it says according to the story I have, it says the, the the South Yorkshire police did not name the suspect, but everyone knows that okay. the only person it could be. I'm not. I don't believe he's underage, so I don't know why that yeah, that story there would say a man. When I when I read it earlier, it said a man. So I, I guess they updated it. So. No, no, the yes might be a little ahead of itself because it doesn't say, I'm looking at the latest thing on ESPN. Well, that was at 1244. Yeah, maybe, listen, maybe yes just saw it and is assuming because it's the only thing that makes sense, but uh, they're saying but the, unnamed. But yeah, but it's weird that it's unnamed. So I, I don't know who else would have been arrested. Don, it's not our job <laughs> to decide what happened. I watched it too many times. To me, it is unfathomable that it was an a the contact was an accident. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that the person thought, I'm going to go ahead and murder someone right now. But it did absolutely look like an intentional action, which, Don, if that's right. true, would make manslaughter, manslaughter the proper would be, charge. would be the charge, and you would be arrested for that. Now, they that this happened a few weeks ago, so clearly there was an investigation other than the grainy video that we saw here in the States that led them to believe there's enough evidence to arrest them. I can't imagine they'd be able to get a conviction unless they've got something that says, I want to kill him or I want to hurt him. Well, Because you know, otherwise you're going to have to break down the video and say, was there intent to injure him? Well, you, but, but I'm no lawyer, uh, but I do play one on television. If you were the lawyer in this case, wouldn't you show the footage and then talk to experts about what, hockey plays look like and ask True. if this is see, possible. That's, see, that's have you ever seen it before? Yeah, I mean, when does this happen? Right, now, maybe I, I have never seen it before, but you would have to then prove that this went above and beyond the hockey play. Now, if I check you into the boards and, God forbid, you die, Different. should I be charged with manslaughter no. if I committed that's a, a hockey regular, act? That's a regular Now, the fact act. that his leg kicked up, I need to know why it did. Now, if he can prove he lost his balance and that's why his leg went up, it, it, I would think it'd be a very difficult thing to prove, but I don't know. I, there's no way he can get convicted for murder, but manslaughter, no, manslaughter. is an accidental death based on something that you committed. Um, maybe well, there's well, enough well, there to do that. Other than if there's a preconceived, um, uh, not preconceived, but if there's something between the two that we don't know about, what kind of psychopath would do that on purpose? 
Well, that's what I think. What I'm saying is, well, first of all, I, I would be a real psychopath. But yeah, Michael, maybe he just meant to kick him, like in the chest. Like I'm going to knock him over in some way. So he, he wasn't hitting... He was hitting somebody else, and then it looked like he was losing his balance, and his leg kicked up. It's not anything that I've seen before. It's not something that I think any hockey player would do to regain balance. No. Kind of looked like to me he wanted to get a piece of. Him. So is that enough for manslaughter? I, I, probably. Probably if they could prove that part of it. Uh, lastly, it's guys, shame, really, it's an awful story. Lastly, guys, Zion Williamson early in the season not seeming so happy in New Orleans. You know, like I said last year, you know, we had a team meeting and it was brought up some things that I could do better, especially like with buying into the program. And right now it's tough right now, but like I said, right now I'm taking a little back seat right now and I'm, uh, I'm trusting the process. I'm trying my best to buy in right now. Did he come off the, uh, the marathon course? At that point? He had just he had just finished the the New York oh, Marathon. Wow. That's correct. I, they've lost five in a row, mm. but they still are a ten seed. They're four and six. It's still early in the season. But Skip Schumacher, manager of the year in the National League. All right, we're going to say goodbye to yes and say that was the end. Brought to you by Security Dodge. Shop twenty four seven at securitydodge.com. That's a wrap on the show for today. Coming up next, our coverage of the Nets and Magic comes your way with the pregame show for all of us here on the Michael K Show. This is Chris Sheeran saying have a great night. We'll see you again tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Your dinner party was a hit. Your dishwasher took a hit. Your teen is giving laundry a try. Your dryer left you hung out to dry. Date night with the crush. Ah, your toilet won't flush. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Visit ahs.com and get a free quote today. just shipped our millionth monthly coffee subscription box. We're sending custom thank you gifts to everyone on our team who helped us get there. I had to call Eric at Custom Inc. Custom Inc. has been with us from the beginning, and he makes sure that we get everything we need and even reminds us of our own company milestones. This milestone, though, I get to tell him about. He is every bit as excited as we are and knows great quality products we can customize and send for the gifts. Celebrate all your milestones with custom gear. Get started today at customink.com. My goal is to become the place where parents and caregivers come to find childcare that works for them. My goal is to build the largest university in the world. My dream is to be the telemedicine provider for kids and families to stop generational trauma. I want to change culture. I want to enable these gaming communities to become self-sufficient. That's the goal. I'm Jesse Dover, co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Land and Carry All, a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry. After all, this city is a reflection of who I am, purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. Does it still count as ending the night with McDonald's? If you order it for breakfast the morning after? I'm ordering either way. Order McDelivery in the app.
I'm in a betting system that's really working great for me. So did I. What's yours? I set up an hour a week time limit on FanDuel. I can also set up wager limits. So I only bet what I can afford, and betting saves fun. Right. So what's your system? What's that? Your system. What's your system? <laughs> what is that? Every better has a system. Make FanDuel's responsible gaming tools a key part of yours. like a holiday shopping showdown, but it's a Nissan sales event to add. Good thing my Rogue has intelligent all-wheel drive. So does my Altima. Now get a low $349 per month lease on Rogue or get a low $289 per month lease on Altima. Better hurry. These offers won't be back in stock. So call Car Shield today. Hey, nice. Ric Flair? See, you're the new guy, huh? What? What do you know about Car Shield? They're America's number one auto protection. Beginner's luck. Are we doing this? Let's go. What's Car Shield do best? They help save drivers money on expensive out of warranty repairs. What's included with every plan? Courtesy towing, 24 7 roadside assistance, and rental car. Last question What do drivers say when they save? Uh, uh, uh Tick tock? Well, they're pumped because they have coverage over 5,000 parts and systems. Nice try, newbie. Well, then it must be because they can choose a mechanic or a dealer of their choice. Wait, Rick, aren't you going to tell me what they say? What do they, what do they say when they save? Woo! I knew that. I, I knew that. Woo! Find out what the woo is all about and call Car Shield today for your free quote. Well, the last two wins for the Brooklyn Nets were marked by effective defense down the stretch and needed offensive boost late tonight. The Nets host the Orlando Magic, and there is added significance as in-season tournament play continues. Brooklyn goes for a third straight win at home, and to move over 500, the Magic look to improve to 500 as they open their Group C in-season tournament. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the FanDuel Nets pregame show live from Broccoli Center with Frank Isola. I'm Nancy Newman. We are going to break down tonight's matchup in just a moment. But first, we are going right to news of the day. It broke about a couple of hours ago, and it is a medical update on Ben Simmons. The Nets guard forward Ben Simmons, who has missed the past three games with a left hip contusion, underwent an MRI due to lingering discomfort in the area. The imaging revealed a nerve impingement in the lower left side of his back. Simmons will continue to receive treatment on both his hip and back. A status update will be provided in one week. Here's head coach with the latest on Ben Simmons. He'll be out at least a week. Uh, you know, I had been... Uh, <laughs> telling you guys that he was day-to-day. -day. I try to give you as much as I can, as honest as I can, and Ben was day-to-day. -day. He was improving and uh, got to a point where uh, obviously he wasn't playing, so uh, we wanted to be extremely thorough. Had an MRI yesterday, uh, which was red today, uh, which showed uh, left impingement, left side impingement, and um, We'll look at him uh, a week from now. He has been getting treatment. He'll continue to get treatment uh, and hopefully responds to that. Uh, he had been showing signs of being positive and uh, leaning in the right direction of feeling better. Uh, and so hopefully, hopefully a week from now, well, we can see some more progress. Two questions following up on that. Uh, this is a different part of the body and a different impingement than he had last year. Are you of the mind that they are completely unrelated, or did you think that the injury, the initial impingement, kind of led to this one? Yeah, like you said, totally different side than, sure. than last year. Uh, Brian, I'm not in a position to speculate if there's any correlation. Uh, we, we know that there was an acute play that happened in the game. 
uh, that kind of got us in this position, uh, but not in a position to to, to uh, speculate if there's a connection. I tried to joke with him. Uh, he was getting treatment on the table. I just tried to joke with him because uh, we had uh, text each other a little bit. And, um, you know, these, these athletes, they want to play and uh, they want to contribute. And uh, no athlete wants to be hurt. And uh, this is not something he has asked for, uh, not something that he wants. Uh, we were trying at the time to really get our group whole and healthy and form an identity together, and he's a part of that identity. And uh, Ben has brought an element to our team that is irreplaceable uh, because of the style that he plays with and the things that he helps benefit our team in doing. Uh, so, again, I'm going to take a positive approach to this thing, and uh, hopefully a week from now he's feeling better when uh, we have an update for you guys. But uh, no athlete wants to be hurt. Well, he's already missed four straight games due to that left hip. It was upgraded from sore to a contusion on Sunday, and, Frank, he initially hurt it versus Milwaukee eight days ago. Well, I think, you know, I kind of feel like we're back to square one with Ben Simmons if you go over the summer and he's got the Instagram post where he looks good obviously then you see him in training camp for media day he was optimistic I thought he played pretty well in the preseason obviously when you're coming off of a back surgery you're, you're working towards getting yourself back to 100 percent and in a rhythm and now this is a significant setback and the bottom line is Ben Simmons has only appeared in 48 of a possible 129 games with the Brooklyn Nets. That includes eight playoff games. It includes tonight's game as well. So, you know, you're not looking to make fun of Ben Simmons or shame him in any way, but if I'm the uh, Brooklyn Nets and if I'm Jock Vaughn, I don't know how you can rely on him. If he comes back, it's great. But you have to kind of operate thinking that he's not going to come back because I feel like the Nets have been down this road before them. He could certainly help if he's... If he's healthy and he's playing at the top of his game, he grabs rebounds, he runs the court, he initiates the break. Remember, to start the season, the Nets were getting a lot of early baskets and transitions, and certainly a good passer. But I don't know how you can operate any other way than thinking he might not come back. You don't know if he comes back and he's and he's healthy, that's great. But you can't. If you're, there's no way that Jock Point is sitting there thinking in a month we'll have him, six weeks we'll have him, two months we'll have him. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can think like that. And it's so disappointing, Frank, because we saw him at training camp and he was talking about how he has felt so good, much better than he has yeah. in such a long time. And you and Brian Lewis from the New York Post asked a question about the two different injuries. But when you're talking about a back and you're talking about nerve impingements. Somehow they're all connected to one another. And I think once a player goes down the road, you know, with a back, it's always a big question mark. You know, if you look at guys in the NBA, Kevin Durant came back from Achilles injury. Guys come back from knee injuries and foot injuries. A back injury is a lot trickier. You never know how a guy's going to respond to something like that. So it's an unfortunate situation. Again, for the Brooklyn Nets, I think they had high hopes for Ben Simmons and what he could mean for this team. I think they still believe that he could maybe help them. But again... You don't know if he's going to come back. I don't know how you could be planning on having Ben Simmons in a Brooklyn Net uniform again this season. So it's moved forward without him, at least for now. And to the task at hand, and that's in-season tournament play continues. Let's take a look at the graphic breakdown. The Nets' third game in the East Group C. The Magic's first, interestingly. The Nets won at Chicago, lost at Boston. Kind of a must-win, Frank, to get to 3-1 and one and hope for a wild card, or Boston has to lose twice in order for the Nets to win. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely still alive right now if you're the Brooklyn Nets. What's interesting about tonight's game it's not only an in-season tournament game, it's your first in-season tournament game at home, which is important. If you win the game, not only are you in great position in your group, but you also move over 500 in the overall standing. So it's not a bad thing. And you look, they already got the tough game out of the way. That's Boston, and they lost that game. But if you can win these remaining games, A, they have a chance to win the group, but they could also still qualify as one of the one wildcard teams to come out of the East to make it to the quarterfinals. So there's a lot to play for tonight for the Brooklyn Nets. Well, do the players like it? Let's find out. They spoke about it at shoot-around today. Compete as always. Um, you know, there's some things that we need to clean up that we've seen over the past couple games, and uh, I think that's a big emphasis is just, you know, continue to play with pace, continue to play hard. How have you liked the in-season tournament so far and kind of what it does bring to the league now that you've got, gotten a chance to play in it? Uh, the courts are definitely different. That, I mean, I didn't play the Chicago one, but that Boston court was very green. 
looking forward to seeing what ours looks like tonight. Um, but there's definitely a little added competitive edge. Um, so, you know, these games mean stuff to us. Um, all these regular season games do, especially as we try to build something. So look forward to it. You talked about seeing it tonight. Does it add an extra boost to have the fans also there to be able to kind of experience the in-season tournament, to see the jerseys, to see the court, and uh, just have to kind of have it all together? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and I hope that they bring that added juice to the game. Um, you know, they've been supporting us well this year, and, and I love to see it. It's pretty dope. The arena is nice. Um, you know, they change up the court, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, and, I mean, I've, I've seen a couple of other teams play the, the tournament games. And it looked like high-level basketball. They're really out there competing, so I appreciate it. And with tonight's Magic group, uh, when you watch the film, what stands out to you about how you guys match up against them and what's going to be some of the big keys? Uh, they're a pretty versatile team. They got a lot of guys that can do multiple things. Like, they got big guys who can handle in the pick and roll, um, wings that are handling in the pick and roll. And we kind of got the same thing over here. So it should be a good matchup. Um, a lot of cross matches is expected tonight. But uh, we got a pretty good game plan. So if we follow it, we should be able to, uh, to have, a, have a pretty good night. And, Frank, it's been a hot topic, the look of the courts. Here's our first glance at the Brooklyn Nets home deal. Like it? The two shades of gray? Ah, uh, the, uh, very good. The Brooklyn Nets court looks good. Yeah. You know, if you, uh, the Chicago Bulls one, which Cam Johnson had referred to, the red, that was horrible. <laughs> uh, Phoenix had a court which was purple. I thought it was really hard to watch the game. This one doesn't overwhelm you by any stretch of the imagination, so it looks good. You know, it's funny. Last night, Adam Silver, the commissioner, was on NBC Sports Boston with Mike Gorman and Brian Scalabrini, and he did say, Mal, maybe some of the courts we have to change but I think they kind of like the shock value of it so if you're in a restaurant or a bar and the game is on you know that it's different and that's what the league has wanted they want these games to stand out and it's actually working right now the ratings are up the ratings are up 55 percent uh, over from last season to this season for these November games and a lot of it has to do with the tournament I think the players to Dennis Smith Jr.'s point the basketball has been better the games have been very close so I think players are buying into it as well They'll work on the kinks, but I think the in-season tournament is here to stay. Or it should be called the NBA Cup, and then they'll get a sponsor. <laughs> Maybe the Nancy Newman NBA Cup. How about that? You can afford Frank it. Frank Isola, not the Sinatra. <laughs> not the Sinatra. That's the Iron Eagle <laughs> line. I love that. Okay. It's break time here on the FanDuel Nets pregame show. When we return, we're going to take a look at the Orlando Magic providing tonight's opposition. They're 5-4, and four, looking to improve to 500. Nets, they've got other ideas. The Nets pregame show on Yes is presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Your dinner party was a hit. Your dishwasher took a hit. Your teen is giving laundry a try. Your dryer left you hung out to dry. Date night with the crush. Ah, your toilet won't flush. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Visit ahs.com and get a free quote today. I was tired of being told by my doctor that my weight was always the root of my problems. Found changed that. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found and I'm just getting started. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. Their team of behavioral experts helped me to make lasting changes. Finally, I found a program that fits my lifestyle, improved my health, helped me reclaim my confidence. Try it out. Head to joinfound.com to start. I'm Jesse Dover, co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Landon Carry-All, a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry. After all, this city is a reflection of who I am, purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. This is my coffee shop. And that's me and my custom shirt from Custom Inc. This week, we moved into a new, bigger space and brought on another employee. 
To celebrate, I ordered new branded gear for the whole team. Everything was so easy to make with Custom Inc.'s Design Lab. I just chose my products, added our logo, and placed my order. Our new gear really helps us look and feel like a team. Bring your own team together with custom gear. Get started today at custominc.com. The Nets pregame show on Yes is brought to you in part by the New York Lottery. Get out there and play. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 or over. Let's go. Can't wait on you right now. We are back on the FanDuel Nets pregame show. The Orlando Magic come in at 5-4 and four. recently. It was a loss to Atlanta in Mexico City. That was Friday night. And, Frank, they held Milwaukee under 100 points on Saturday for the victory. Yeah, the one thing you have to remember about the Orlando Magic, they started this season. They went on a four-game West Coast trip. They came home for two games. Then they had to go to Mexico. So they've had a crazy schedule to begin the year, and it's a young team. So many young players on the team, and that, that's going to impact them. I think they'll be better as the year goes on, but to your point, the other night against Milwaukee, they played a really good game against a quality opponent. They took it to the Milwaukee Bucks. And we have to talk about Paolo Bancaro, of course, averaging about 19 points per game. He's upping his game this season. Yep. I'm all mm -hmm. four more Italian players in the league. Now, Paolo <laughs> could have played for the Italian national team. He actually committed to them. Then he decided to play for the United States, which, you know, that's an issue we'll get into at a later time. But think about this for <laughs> Paolo Bancaro. On Sunday, he turned 21. Feels like he's been around for a while. Remember the one year at Duke and now obviously a couple of years in the NBA. But look at the size of the guy. He has LeBron type of size. He's only going to get better. Four of his last five games, he scored at least 21 points. He had 26 against Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. Paolo Bencaro has a chance to be a big time player. And again, he's 21 years old. So he's got a long career ahead of him. And he's already a terrific player. He's only going to get better. Here's Coach Vaughn on the Orlando Magic tonight's opponent. I love our court. Yeah, I'm kind of, I like this different courts. <laughs> Good. And with this team and this game for tonight, it's a needed win when it comes to moving on in group play. What's your, your your approach going into tonight's game as you guys match up against the Magic? Yeah, this is a, uh, a, a really good ball club. Well coached. You see the progress of their young guys. Um, tough defensive team, so our ability to score tonight will be at a premium. Uh, we'll be challenged to do that, taking care of the basketball. Uh, like you said, this will either advance us or not advance us in, in, uh, in our pool. Uh, so we'll use the guys that we have, uh, and, and I think uh, we'll have a chance to, to win a ball game. Before we go to break, here's what's happening in the G League, brought to you by Ford. Pretty nice record here on Friday. A victory over the Raptors Saturday, defeating Greensboro. And then last night, again, back-to-back -back victories over Greensboro by the Long Island Nets. It is break time on the FanDuel pregame show. When we return, we're going to shine the spotlight on Batman. Dennis Smith Jr. has been so resilient. Nice to see him back. Dinner al fresco. All worries forgotten. Broken fridge with food that is rotten. Birthday cake for everyone. This blown fuse is no fun. Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered parts of appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Sign up today at ahs.com. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. Get a 10 to 14 pound turkey free in your first box. Butcher Box. I'm Jesse Dover. 
co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Landon Carryall, a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry. After all, this city is a reflection of who I am, purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. You done yet? It's 2 a.m. Why are you still scrolling through videos? You're not paying me overtime here. If you really want to see something new, why not change those shades that have been broken for the past two years? Let's tap the Thumbtack app, and in a matter of seconds, we'll find a pro to install new shades. Okay. With Thumbtack, you can easily find top-rated professionals for every home project. Thumbtack, the, the easy way to care for your home. Kia dealer. Lease a new 2023 Forte LXS for $189 a month. Welcome back. Dennis Smith Jr. was with the Charlotte Hornets last season playing in 58 games. Then in the offseason, he signed a one-year deal with the Nets. Here's more on Brooklyn's backup point guard. It to the open man. It's Smith. Count it. A triple. Dennis Smith Jr. is officially a net. I think it's a perfect spot for me to come in and be myself. You know what I'm saying? Like the things that I bring to the game will really benefit this team. And the thing that my teammates are really good at will benefit me as well. So it just made the most sense for me to be here. I think when you say Dennis Smith Jr. smile just immediately comes on my face. Uh, to see a guy that plays extremely hard, uh, cares about winning, cares about his teammates, has a joy about competing, uh, doesn't mind hitting people uh, in, a, in a contact sport. I spoke to Jock Vine early in free agency. We just had a great conversation. And then I got to talk to a couple of the players as well before I made my decision. And, you know, just everything that they were saying was like kind of on board with the things I believe in and kind of where I'm at in my career. So I felt like it was a hand and glove fit. The dish inside, off the bucket pass, the net score. Dennis Smith Jr. having an impact. Smith left alone. Cutting. Smith trying to use his body on Leonard. This is a tough matchup. And he picks his pocket. The Nets are running. Three on one developing. Smith takes it in and corkscrews the layup. I got to be honest, I knew he was a good defender. You know, I knew he's a ferocious, humble defender. Uh, I didn't know quite how good he was um, in some other facets, some of the intangibles. Pushing buttons, players, holding people accountable. He's the loudest guy in the gym every day. He's fine with the atmosphere being a little bit uncomfortable. And I think you need that. You need somebody to push the group. And that's what he does. Finney Smith misses on a three. Grab by Smith. The Smith way. Something I've been trying to focus in more on is rebounding. Because I know that was a, a area that the team struggled with last season. I think we ended up dead last in rebounding. So, you know, that's just something I've been trying to really key in on and be a better rebounding guard. Off the rim, long rebound to Smith. He'll line it up. Yes, sir! Dennis Smith Jr. crushing it from the corners. We got a lot of dogs on our team. Just that simple. You know, you look at Dennis. He was a, a gnat on the defensive side. Harden trying to take it in. Poke away. Smith has got it. Smith on the move. Takes a look for the trailer. Sharp plays it in. The edge he brings to the table. The toughness. Fun to be around. You see that with these guys, how vocal he is. And those are the type of dogs you need on a team. You yep. need that on both ends of the floor. Put me in there just being vocal and being at the point of attack. You know, I'm in, a, I'm in front of everybody. I'm picking up the ball, so they got to match my energy. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's important for a defense to have a really good POA defender. Smith Jr. with a three, and it's good for Dennis Smith Jr. 
really has a competitive nature that's infectious with the group. Sometimes pushing the group, sometimes pulling the group, sometimes being combative with the group. All those things have a competitive nature about it that make Dennis very special with our group. I understand that New York fans really appreciate good basketball, you know what I'm saying? They want you to go out and compete at a high level, play hard every possession, and I think we got a group of guys that can do that. Smith's open. And it's three to the momentum that Washington was building. I just know when I get out there, I'm going to be ready. Two minutes, five, 22, it don't matter. And Frank, here's a look at his career. He was drafted in 2017 by the Dallas Mavericks. He's a veteran now. What would you say is his calling card in the NBA? Yeah, it's interesting, too. Six teams already in the yeah. NBA. Sean Marks talked about it. Dennis Smith Jr. talked about it. It's defense for him. What I think has been a pleasant surprise thus far, he's shooting 37% on threes. For his career, he's only been at 30%, and that's always been a bit of a weakness for him. So certainly he's worked on that against Washington on Sunday. He was two for two on threes. So I think he understands his role, and when you've been through, you know, so many things that he's been through already in his NBA career, bouncing around team to team, he appreciates every opportunity he has, and you heard what he just said at the end. I don't care how many minutes I play. I'm going to go out there and compete, and that's exactly what he's done this far for the next. And you got a chance to speak with him during the media session during training camp. What was your biggest takeaway from that discussion? How does he fit in? How does he see himself yeah. fitting in? And, and he, for me, he came across as uh, a very mature and kind of having a better understanding of what the league is about. When you come in as a lottery pick, I'm sure you're thinking, you know, the sky's the limit for me. I'm going to be an all-star. I'm going to get a max contract. It doesn't always work out for everybody like that, but you could still have a long and prosperous NBA career. What was interesting, he talked about being in Charlotte last year with Steve Clifford mm -hmm. and how much Steve Clifford meant to his career. Steve Clifford, net fans will remember, he was serving as Steve Nash's kind of advisor mm -hmm. with the Brooklyn Nets a few years ago. So, so Steve Clifford has a bit of a connection here with the Brooklyn Nets, an old coach, and obviously now with Dennis Smith Jr. And there's more connections coming up, too, because Jacques Vaughn is very familiar with right. the Orlando team. Speaking of Coach Vaughn, he will be the subject of our next feature. Head coach, under the lights, coming up. may look like a holiday you done yet it's 2 a.m. why are you still scrolling through videos you're not paying me overtime here if you really want to see something new why not change those shades that have been broken for the past two years let's tap the thumbtack app and in a matter of seconds we'll find a pro to install new shades okay with thumbtack you can easily find top-rated professionals for every home project Thumbtack, the, the easy way to care for your home. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. So you can always be prepared and enjoy the important things. Sign up for Butcher Box today. I'm Jesse Dover, co-founder of Dagny Dover. New York isn't for the faint of heart. The gear you carry around not only has to look good, but it has to work even better. That's why we create bags like the Land and Carry All, a bag that allows organizational junkies like me to be ready for whatever life brings. A bag that allows me to feel good about the things I carry. After all, this city is a reflection of who I am, Purposeful, resilient, and ready to face whatever comes my way. There's an easy way to leave your family with money to help with expenses. It's guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance from Colonial Pen. Visit colonialpen.com for more information and a free gift. Did you see that? Yep. Looks like rain. Also looks like... McDelivery. Order McDelivery in the app. Welcome back. Mikkel Bridges warming up for tonight's contest. Coming off a double-double, 27 points, 13 assists in the victory over the Wizards. Let's check out tonight's starting lineups for both sides. Magic and Nets, Barkley Center. It's Black, Suggs, Wagner, Bancaro, and Vidazzi. 
for the Orlando Magic, the visitors, and it's Spencer Dinwiddie, Mikkel Bridges, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, and Nick Claxton. We promised to feature on Coach Vaughn. He's very familiar with this opponent. He played for the Magic in 0203, coached them from 2012 to 15. Let us shine the spotlight on the Nets head coach. I remember uh, having an unbelievable set of teammates, Jay Kidd, Vince, Quinn, uh, across the board. We had a great group. I think overall, I take from that the experience of you know, competing, creating your own expectations in that locker room, which we did, enjoying the game of basketball. Uh, and I think you saw that how we played on the floor. And then we played hard. You know, that was a group that played extremely hard and for each other. I love being a part of that team. At that time, Lawrence Frank was, was our coach. And um, I've taken something from every coach along my journey. And to see how Lawrence prepared himself, uh, how he commanded the respect of the locker room, and a guy that had uh, been in a different position before. But because of his preparation, the command was there uh, amongst the, the guys in the locker room. But to see that on a different level was pretty cool as athlete. When I was in New Jersey, I had some good games defensively versus San Antonio, guarding uh, Tony Parker. And so they said, well, why not bring this kid over? So uh, I got a chance to play along with Tony to see that group of three, Manu, Tony, and Timmy, how they interacted with each other on a daily basis, their professionalism, their accountability amongst each other. And then how Coach Pop coached those guys. So taking lessons as a coach along the way and as a player being in an environment that it was specifically and strictly about winning. How you prepared yourself on a nightly basis to win that ultimate prize at the end. Uh, and fortunately, I was able to do that with San Antonio and then transition into coaching as well. I told Coach Pop, I said, Pop, uh, my expectations and my standard like I normally am, I'm not there this summer. And so... I think I'm going to step away and see if I'm done playing. And he said, well, if you don't want to play, then let me know uh, if you want to come and observe and, and just be around the group. Um, and so I took some time off, decided that I was ready to give my knowledge to the other young dudes. Uh, and so went, kind of shadowed, didn't know if I was going to coach, front office. He gave me the opportunity to be around each of those areas in the facility. Uh, then the next thing you know, I was sharing an office with them, and then the rest is history. Then I get the opportunity to be one of the youngest coaches uh, at that time in Orlando and uh, take the opportunity and wouldn't turn it down. I wouldn't, I'd do it all over again. An experience I wouldn't give back made me what I am today, the coach that I am today, and made me a better person for sure. The most important lesson I learned since then is not to replicate, but to be who I am. Uh, and that's okay. And so at that time, probably as a young guy, I was trying to prove to the rest of the league that I deserved that job. Uh, and I wasn't vulnerable enough to say I need help. Uh, I probably didn't call Coach Pop enough at that time. Uh, I probably talked to him more now than I did then. So those lessons that I learned, the relationship part of it, having a relationship with my GM, having a relationship with the players, young and old, having a relationship with the performance team, uh, across the building, with the media, those things that I didn't think uh, were important or how I layered their importance, totally different than the coach I am today. I give everything that I have every single day, and then I reload and I try to do it again. And then somehow at the end of this thing, I'm the head coach of this organization, and it's because I think I gave along the way. Uh, and so that's been my approach, and now my opportunity to give to this organization it's just amplified. I do it even more on a daily basis with the new group of players that we have. I feel more indebted to the organization even more now to, to give on a daily basis. But give and it should be given to you. When Sean came to me and was like, we want you to be our head coach, uh, extremely elated. Uh, not only for my family, uh, but for the people who were pulling for me, uh, for the work that had went into giving to our group. Uh, and so I, I, I'm elated. I, I'm excited. I approach my job with uh, an extreme amount of passion every single day and love every single day. It's only 30 of us that, that coach in this NBA. Uh, I hope I represent our organization uh, on a daily basis. I get to coach these guys from the beginning of the year, get to reestablish who we are as an organization. because We've taken a different avenue, and I'm glad I'm a part of that. And so really creating a standard for our group 
not different standards or no standards, but having a standard that our guys can lean into and hold each other accountable. Uh, and I think that's uh, every day. We talk about 